It was a magnificent day at Hamilton Beach in South Carolina, where the white sands extended as far as the eye could see and were gently caressed by the Atlantic surf. The sky was a dazzling blue without a cloud in sight, and the sun cast a warm, inviting glow along the shoreline. Hamilton Beach was humming with the chatter and laughter of beachgoers on this idyllic day. Families had set up bright beach umbrellas and towels, and their kids played and made sandcastles close to the water. Along the water's edge, couples strolled hand in hand, their footprints leaving brief traces in the sand. The lingering aroma of sunscreen served as a reminder of the sun's inviting warmth. A 30-year-old surfer with sun-kissed hair and a year-round tan named Jacob Moore stood out in this gorgeous scenario. The beach was more than simply a place to go for Jacob. It was his calling. He believed that his life's work was to ride the waves, synchronize with the rhythm of the ocean, and find peace in the rising and falling of the tides. Like so many previous days, Jacob went to the beach today with only one intention, to surf the day away. He had honed his abilities for countless hours, becoming sensitive to the subtleties of the ocean. He saw every wave as a chance to connect with the vast blue expanse and every ride as an opportunity. A feeling of excitement overcame him as he dived into the sea. The waves called out to you with hypnotic rhythms and whispered exploration promises. A trusted vehicle for the road ahead, Jacob's board glided alongside him. He felt a strong sense of belonging as he looked toward the horizon, where the turquoise waters and the limitless sky blended. Jacob paddled out through the crashing waves with a strong push, salt water spraying in his face. He stopped, sat on his board, and looked through the swells for the ideal wave. There was more to it than just the rush. There was a connection and a dance between the surfer and the sea. However, destiny had something else in store for Jacob on this seemingly wonderful day. A sharp pain suddenly jolted through his thigh as he caught a promising wave and started to ride it gracefully and expertly. He was in excruciating pain when he peered down and saw a black-nosed shark holding onto his limb. Jacob felt fearful but understood that the key was to remain composed. With a sudden outpouring of strength, he could wrench his leg out of the shark's hold, his blood mixing with the water. He experienced shock and fear, but his instincts as a surfer took over. He was aware that he needed to reach land as soon as possible. In the middle of this nightmare, all the beachgoers who had been having a good time suddenly started screaming and yelling for help as they ran to the water's edge. It was like a wave of panic went through Hilton Beach. Jacob's resolve was unshakable as he struggled through discomfort and shock and pushed himself toward the shore. The faraway shoreline became closer with each stroke as his heart raced. He knew the next 500 meters would be rugged, but his unwavering spirit enabled him to finish the distance. Jacob remained firm despite his bouncing breath and searing muscles. He was even more fierce in the struggle against the icy, unrelenting waters. He overcame nature's obstacles with each stroke, demonstrating that the human spirit could overcome difficulty one resolute stroke at a time. When Jacob finally managed to drag himself onto the sand, his bruised leg was bloody and torn. He was immediately assisted by a nearby paramedic who had been having a great time at the beach. The paramedic's skillful hands put a tourniquet on Jacob's leg to stop the bleeding and provide life-saving first aid. Jacob was placed on the stretcher as the ambulance arrived quickly and the siren blared. The crowd watched in astonishment and awe as Jacob was taken away. Even though his life was in danger, he had a chance to fight back thanks to his bravery and the paramedic's rapid response. Hemerton Beach's audience experienced shock due to the news of the shark attack's news spreading like wildfire. The incident resulted in the closure of the beach to the public and the strict monitoring of the waters by coastal officials. Before reopening Hemerton Beach to tourists, they ensured the area was secure. Jacob started his long and grueling road to recovery after being placed under the hospital's care. He had sustained severe wounds from the shark bite that required extended medical care and therapy. As he faced the challenges ahead, his friends and family came together to surround him and provide unshakable support. In due course, Hemerton Beach once more welcomed surfers and beachgoers, but with a greater feeling of prudence and awe for the force of the ocean. Jacob's tale always served as a sobering reminder of the human spirit's perseverance and the sea's unpredictability. 
Jacob's courage and perseverance emerged through months of physical therapy and rehabilitation. Despite his terrifying experience with the black nose shark, he remained unafraid and refused to let it define him. His return to surfing was an act of bravery and proof of the unbreakable connection between a surfer and the vast, unpredictably undersea world under the ocean. His narrative would live on and serve as a reminder that despite hardship, the human spirit can triumph and that the ocean can heal even the deepest wounds. In the heart of Alaska, a place renowned not only for its breathtaking landscapes and untamed shorelines, but also for its formidable challenges, there was a lone hiker who found himself hopelessly lost. Stranded amidst the vast wilderness, he sent out a desperate call for help, a beacon that cut through the silence and isolation of the wild. This plea for salvation was answered with unwavering determination by a large contingent of rescue workers. These were not ordinary individuals, but skilled experts in navigating the treacherous terrain of Alaska's toughest conditions, ready to embark on a perilous mission to bring the hiker back to safety. Michael Thompson, a name synonymous with courage and experience in the realm of rescue operations, was at the forefront of this mission. Having navigated the Alaskan wilderness more times than he could count, Michael knew well that each call for help brought with it a unique set of challenges. These challenges served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature, teaching him to respect its power and to prepare meticulously for every contingency. Alongside his team, Michael readied himself for what was to be one of their most demanding missions to date, a testament to their unwavering commitment to saving lives against all odds. Their journey to reach the stranded hiker was fraught with peril at every turn. Leading his team with unparalleled expertise, Michael guided them through the dense forests that blanketed the land, across icy streams that challenged their resolve, and over snow-covered fields that stretched as far as the eye could see. The cold bit mercilessly at their faces and the wind howled like a warning, urging them to turn back. Yet it was the knowledge that a life hung in the balance that drove their persistence pushing them forward against the elements. As they made their way closer to the coast, an unexpected danger loomed on the horizon. Hidden beneath the water's surface lay a previously unknown pack of territorial great white sharks, drawn closer to the shore by an unusual current. This unforeseeable threat emerged into their path, adding an unforeseen obstacle to their already perilous mission. Undeterred, the team set up their base camp near the water's edge, determined to reach the hiker by dawn. Time was not their ally, as the biting cold and isolation threatened to turn their rescue mission into a recovery operation if they were not swift. Gathering around their maps and equipment under the dim light of a lantern, a sense of unease enveloped the team. Alaska, with all its surprises, seemed to harbor a foreboding sense that this mission would be unlike any other. Its shores, usually a source of majestic beauty, now felt like the borders of a realm where the dominance of humans was challenged by the raw forces of nature. As dawn broke, painting the sky in vibrant hues of pink and gold, Michael and his team were ready to embark on the next phase of their mission. The last known location of the hiker was several miles up the coast, an area notorious for its treacherous cliffs and unpredictable tides. Michael cast a contemplative glance over the water, unaware of the shadows beneath the surface drawing nearer setting the stage for an epic confrontation between man and the untamed forces of nature. The rescue team set out with renewed purpose, navigating the rough terrain expertly. Their eyes were constantly scanning the landscape, searching for any sign of life. They were beacons of hope in an otherwise desolate wilderness, embodying the spirit of resilience and determination that defines the human condition. However, as they approached the water, a silent threat began to emerge from its depths, Great white sharks, sensing the intrusion into their territory, were on high alert. What started as a mission to save a stranded hiker soon transformed into a battle for survival, not just for the hiker but for the rescuers themselves. With no time to spare and the lurking danger of sharks at every turn, the team quickened their pace, racing against time and nature. Through the mist and the rugged terrain, they finally located the injured hiker, signaling for help from a small outcrop above the icy waters. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Michael sprang into action, coordinating an emergency response with precision and calm. 
Utilizing ropes and harnesses, they executed a delicate operation to guide the hiker away from the precarious edge, away from the menacing gaze of sharks circling below. Though the hiker was weak, his relief was palpable as he thanked Michael and his team through chattering teeth. Having secured the hiker, they retraced their steps back to base camp, ever vigilant for signs of the sharks. Perhaps sensing the rescuer's intention to save a life, the sharks remained below the surface, allowing the team to pass without incident. Back at base camp, the atmosphere was one of subdued triumph. The team, skilled and battle-weary, administered first aid to the hiker, whose gratitude shone through his weary eyes. Wrapped in warm blankets, he was prepared for the journey back to civilization, a journey that symbolized more than just a return to safety. It was a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who dare to venture into the unknown and those who risk everything to bring them back. The encounter with the great white sharks, while a harrowing reminder of the dangers lurking in the wilderness, also served as a profound lesson. Nature in all its majestic beauty and terrifying unpredictability demands respect. This mission, fraught with unforeseen dangers and challenges, underscored the fragile balance between humanity and the natural world. The sharks, apex predators of their domain, had allowed them a passage, a momentary truce in the faceless expanse of the wild. As Michael and his team departed the remote Alaskan coastline, the experience lingered in their minds. They were leaving behind not just the rugged terrain and icy waters, but also a piece of themselves, a reminder of their vulnerability and strength in the face of nature's unfathomable power. The thanks of the hiker they had saved was a warm ember in their hearts, but it was the deepened respect for Alaska's wild beauty and hidden mysteries that they carried away with them. The wilderness, with its capacity to awe and terrify, had once again proved itself as a formidable teacher. In the end, it wasn't just a life that was saved, it was a profound encounter with the wild that would forever remind them of their place in the vast tapestry of life. As they made their way home, the team knew that Alaska would call again, and when it did, they would answer, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. United in their respect for the wild and their commitment to saving lives within its untamed heart. In 2007, the moonlight lit Bayfield Island's calm waters as the sapphire star gently floated on the horizon. A young marine researcher named Isabella Bella Rivera waited at the vessel's bow, her eyes brimming with joy. Next to her was her daring and capable sailing companion, Alexander Alex Donovan, who had been her best friend for many years. Bella voiced her excitement, stating that she couldn't believe they were going to investigate the secrets of Bayfield Island, and she went on to explain why. Alex grinned as he responded and mentioned that it would be an experience that they would never forget. Captain Jeremiah Jerry Blackwood of the Sapphire Star joined them and remarked that they were ready for the adventure of a lifetime comparing their appearance to that of excited children on Christmas morning. Professor Victoria Vicky Thornton, a well-known marine archaeologist, guided their expedition to discover the ocean's mysteries. When the yacht stopped near the island, Vicky invited everyone on board to join her on the deck and welcomed them, recounting the belief that Bayfield Island was protected by a legendary shark so large that it could consume a whale. Bella's eyes expanded with curiosity when she questioned the idea in such tales. She was intrigued. Vicky laughed and reassured them that stories frequently had a kernel of truth, which was precisely what they were looking for, and why they were there in the first place. She cautioned them to exercise extreme caution because the waters were treacherous and alluring. Bella and her friends geared up for their dive with excited anticipation as they gathered their research materials and put on their scuba gear. They descended into the abyss, which opened their eyes to the marvels beneath the ocean's surface, such as thriving coral reefs and a wide variety of marine life. As the days passed into nights, Bella became increasingly enthralled by the story of the legendary shark. She noticed patterns in the sightings of the shark that suggested it had a more profound relationship with the island. Bella and Alex decided to investigate a spooky cave that had been on their minds for a while. They did so when the sun was setting. They entered and found an ancient cave with engravings depicting a fabled shark guarding the island. Bella was amazed by the sculptures and remarked that it appeared as though the shark was a protector of something important to the island's heritage. Alex nodded in agreement and observed that whatever it was, 
it carried a significant amount of importance. During this time, Captain Jerry and Professor Vicky were busy studying their research data to understand the shark's behavior better and to determine whether or not there was a connection between the shark and the island's history of piracy. As the mission went on, an uneasy feeling began to spread across the group. Rumors that the shark was nearby stoked excitement and anxiety in the crew members. Her desire propelled Bella forward, but she couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that the legendary creature was following their every step. When Bella and Alex were scuba diving one fatal night near a shipwreck, the great white shark suddenly materialized in front of them, creating an eerie shadow with its gigantic size. As she peered at the magnificent yet menacing creature, Bella's pulse raced as it raced faster and faster. Alex hushed them that they ought to return to the yacht, his gaze fixed on the shark the entire time. Despite this, Bella found herself pulled to the creature's stare and had the distinct impression that she was privy to something that transcended the passage of time. She concluded that the shark was not the monstrous creature represented in various traditions. As the journey drew to a close, Bella made a decision that surprised everyone. She concluded that it was best to keep some mysteries a mystery, and decided to keep the shark's secret a secret. She was aware that most people wouldn't get her reasoning, but she couldn't stand by and let the legendary beast be turned into another story used for amusement. After completing their task, Bella, Alex, Vicky, and Jerry sailed away from Bayfield Island. They took memories that would last a lifetime and a greater respect for the wild and unfathomable ocean secrets. As a result, the tale of the enormous shark continued to be kept a secret beneath the water's surface by the very island it defended. It turned into a story passed down from sailor to sailor, a tribute to the untamed wonders beyond the depths waiting to be uncovered by those courageous enough to pursue the truth. Bella's life has been irrevocably altered as a result of the journey. Her curiosity about aquatic life and her admiration for the mysterious creature increased as time passed. Bella carried on with her investigation while holding the recollections of Bayfield Island dear to her heart. After some time, Bella became a well-respected marine researcher famous for her pioneering work in shark protection. She would never forget the look of mesmerization on the shark's face she had experienced on that terrible night. In her imagination, the story of the enormous shark continued to exist as a constant reminder of the wild beauty of the ocean. Alex followed his interest in sailing and eventually became a well-known captain with a profound love for the ocean. He often thought back to their journey to Bayfield Island, cherishing the memories of his time spent with Bella and the secret they had solved together during their time there. The stories of the mythical shark that had become a part of nautical tradition served as Captain Jerry's navigational compass as he continued his voyages across the oceans. He entertained his crew with stories of the mysterious creature, ensuring the tale would be remembered for a long time. Professor Vicky, whose heart was filled with appreciation for the trip of a lifetime, decided to commit to educating future generations about the significance of protecting marine life and appreciating the untamed ocean secrets. She did this with the full knowledge that she would never forget the expedition. The tale of the enormous shark continued to captivate seafarers and explorers alike, motivating them to explore the great unknown while maintaining a sense of awe and respect for the marine life that made the ocean their home. The fact that Bella had found evidence of the legendary shark remained a closely guarded secret as the years passed. She knew that certain enigmas should be preserved in their unsolved state, since this would enable nature to keep its mysterious charm. The world may need to learn the truth about the gigantic shark. Still, for Bella, Alex, Vicky, and Jerry, the experience will remain a treasured memory permanently inscribed into their life's annals. As a result, the unconquerable mysteries of the ocean remained, calling out to the exploratory spirits among us to discover and decipher their hidden meanings. The story of the enormous shark would always serve as a reminder to Bella that marvels were designed to be kept firmly rooted in the domain of fantasy. This was where the line separating truth and myth was hazy, making way for aspirations to soar in the vastness of the vast ocean. In the bustling marine research community of Long Island, New York, Dr. Ava Simmons, a dedicated marine biologist, embarked on a groundbreaking research project. Her focus was on the behavioral patterns of sharks in the North Atlantic, 
a study that aimed to demystify these often misunderstood creatures. Ava, known for her fearless approach and innovative methods, believed that close observation in their natural habitat was key to unlocking new insights. In early June 2001, Ava set off to a remote island off the coast of Long Island, a place known for its rich marine life and notably, its diverse shark population. She planned to spend a week on the island, conducting underwater observations using state-of-the-art technology, including drones and underwater cameras. Ava's base camp was a small, weather-beaten cabin on the island's edge, surrounded by the vast expanse of the ocean. She had all the essentials for her stay research equipment, provisions, and a small boat for her daily excursions. Her only companion was her loyal assistant, Mark, a young marine science graduate eager to learn from one of the best in the field. Ava and Mark ventured into the ocean daily, tracking and observing the sharks from a safe distance. Ava's method was to blend into the environment as much as possible, using a specialized diving suit that mimicked the texture and color of the seabed. Her approach worked. They gathered valuable data, observing the sharks' natural behaviors without disturbing them. However, on the fourth day, something extraordinary happened. While Ava was submerged, a curious great white shark, larger than any she had seen before, approached her. Its size was imposing, yet its movements were graceful, almost gentle. Ava's heart raced. She was both exhilarated and terrified. She knew she had to remain calm. Sudden movements could provoke the shark. The shark circled Ava, its dark eyes seeming to study her. Ava stayed as still as possible, her training telling her that the shark was more curious than aggressive. Watching from the boat, Mark was ready to intervene, but Ava signaled him to stay back. This was a rare opportunity to observe up close. The shark and Ava shared the water for several long minutes, a silent dance of predator and observer. Then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the shark swam away, disappearing into the deep blue. Ava emerged from the water, her heart still pounding, her mind racing with what she had just experienced. Back at the cabin, Ava documented the encounter in her research log that evening. This was more than just a close call. It was a moment of connection, a glimpse into the intelligence and complexity of these magnificent creatures. The following days brought more observations, but none as intense as her encounter with the Great White. Ava's respect for these animals deepened, and she felt a renewed sense of purpose in her research. Her findings would contribute to the scientific understanding of sharks and the conservation efforts to protect them. Ava and Mark packed their equipment as the week ended, ready to return to the mainland. Ava looked at the ocean one last time, knowing that this trip had forever changed her perspective. The journey back to Long Island was quiet, with Ava lost in thought, replaying the encounter with the great white shark repeatedly in her mind. It was a moment that blurred the lines between observer and participant, a reminder of how little we truly understand about these creatures of the deep. Ava's findings at the Marine Research Facility stirred excitement among her peers. Her close encounter in particular sparked a flurry of discussions. The footage she captured was unlike anything they had seen before, providing unprecedented insights into shark behavior. But for Ava, the experience had left her with more questions than answers. Driven by her newfound curiosity, Ava dedicated the following months to analyzing the data. She worked tirelessly, piecing together the Great White's behavior puzzle. Her research began to suggest something revolutionary, that these sharks might possess a level of curiosity and intelligence that had previously been underestimated. The academic world buzzed with the implications of Ava's research. Invitations to speak at conferences and contribute to prestigious journals poured in. Ava, however, remained focused on her work, knowing that this was just the beginning of a longer journey of discovery. Ava prepared for a return trip to the island as the months turned into a year. This time, her mission was to establish a more permanent research station, allowing for continuous observation and study of the sharks in that region. Now a more experienced researcher under Ava's mentorship, Mark joined her again. The new research station, a blend of technology and sustainability, was a testament to Ava's vision. Equipped with advanced tracking systems, underwater drones, and a dedicated team of researchers, it was a hub of shark research unlike anything that had existed before. Ava's work began to shift the public perception of sharks, 
She advocated for their conservation through her publications and talks, dispelling the myths and fears that had long surrounded these animals. She emphasized the importance of sharks in the marine ecosystem and the urgent need to protect them. Two years after her initial encounter, Ava found herself again in the waters off the island, observing a group of great whites. Among them, she recognized the distinctive markings of the shark that had approached her that fateful day. It was a surreal moment, a silent acknowledgement between researcher and subject. Ava's research continued, contributing significantly to the field of marine biology. Her experience with the Great White became a cornerstone of her career, a story she often shared to inspire others. It was a tale of respect, discovery, and the endless mysteries of the ocean. Years later, Ava retired, leaving behind a legacy of groundbreaking research and a new generation of marine biologists who continued her work. The research station on the island remained a beacon of learning and conservation in the vast, unexplored waters of the world. As Ava looked back on her career, she realized that her greatest discovery wasn't in the data or the accolades, but in her profound connection with the ocean and its inhabitants. It was a reminder that in the depths of the sea, there are wonders beyond our imagination, waiting to be uncovered. In the haunting shadows cast by recent events, the serene waters off South Australia had become the unsettling backdrop to a series of tragic encounters between humans and the ocean's apex predators. The disquieting narrative deepened with the news of a third fatal shark attack in the region, claiming the life of 15-year-old surfer Kai Cowley. The remote Ethel Beach on the York Peninsula, where the incident unfolded, was a chilling reminder that even the most idyllic coastal landscapes can harbor unseen dangers. Kai, surfing alongside his father, fell victim to a suspected great white shark on that ominous Thursday, etching his name into the sad record of lives lost to the enigmatic depths. As authorities grappled with the aftermath of this heart-wrenching episode, the waters off South Australia held the echoes of a tale that transcended the idyllic facade of seaside bliss. Delving into the complex relationship between humanity and the formidable inhabitants of the Southern Ocean, the somber echoes of tragedy lingered on the shores of South Australia as emergency services, grappling with the harsh reality, were unable to revive the 15-year-old Kai Cowley after the suspected great white shark attack. This heart-wrenching incident now stood as the third fatal shark encounter off the state's coast in recent months, casting a shadow over the idyllic beaches that had become the backdrop to these harrowing narratives. The chilling chronicle extended beyond Kai's tragic demise, weaving into the fabric of a larger troubling pattern. Surfers met a similarly grim fate in remote parts of South Australia in May and October. Their bodies were lost to the unrelenting depths. South Australia's premier, Peter Malinowskis, confronted the stark reality that since 2000, 11 fatal shark attacks have unfolded in the state's waters. The revelation that three of these fatalities occurred in the span of a few months sparked profound concern. In the face of this rising toll, the Premier acknowledged the limited capacity of the government to enhance beach safety, particularly in the remote expanses outside Adelaide, the state capital. The story unfolded as a tapestry of loss, raising questions about the delicate balance between human recreation and the unpredictable forces that govern the Southern Ocean's enigmatic depths. In the calm echoes of Ethel Beach's remote beauty, the unfolding tragedy took a visceral turn as a surfer became an unwitting participant in a battle for life against the shadows of the Southern Ocean. A first-hand account shared with local media brought forth the heart-wrenching scene. A father perched on the rocks, his anguished cries blending with the crashing waves as his son desperately swam toward him. Standing in waist-deep water, the witness faced a critical juncture, a moment of life-altering decision. Opting for a rapid retreat into chest-deep waters, the surfer found himself trapped in the relentless grip of the ocean's apex predator. Undeterred by the surfer's frantic sprint, the great white shark dragged him back towards the shore, where a horrified crowd witnessed the unfolding tragedy. Paramedics who had been summoned to the grim tableau engaged in a race against time, their efforts to treat the surfer's injuries painting a futile struggle against the relentless forces at play. This heart-rending episode, embedded in the sands of Ethel Beach on the York Peninsula in southern Australia, was a stark reminder of the unpredictable dance between humanity and the formidable denizens of the deep. As the popular yet secluded tourist spot grappled with the aftermath of this devastating encounter, 
The incident became a poignant chapter in the complex narrative that binds human recreation with the untamed forces of the Southern Ocean. In the aftermath of the tragic encounter at Ethel Beach, the poignant narrative of Kai Cowley gains depth, revealing a vibrant young life that held promise in the realm of surfing. Just two weeks before his untimely demise, Kai showcased his talent, securing the impressive 146th rank among under-18 surfers in the country. His accomplishments resonated within the tight-knit community, earning him the title of the Most Outstanding Grom Performer by his local Seaview Roadboard Riders Surf Club. These accolades, now woven into the fabric of his legacy, illuminated Kai's profound impact on the surfing world at such a tender age. The tragedy of his passing cast a shadow not only on the remote shores of Ethel Beach, but it also reverberated through the broader surfing community, leaving admirers and fellow surfers grappling with the loss of a rising star whose potential was extinguished by the unrelenting forces of the sea. In the wake of the tragic events at Ethel Beach, the broader surfing community rallied to pay homage to the vibrant young talent lost to the unforgiving waves. In an Instagram post laden with sorrow, Surfing South Australia expressed their condolences and shared the collective grief of the surfing fraternity. After the devastating news that one of their Grom surfers, Kai, was involved in a fatal incident at Ethel Beach on December 28th, they had been keeping Kai's family and friends in their thoughts. That was the post that read, encapsulating the somber acknowledgement of life extinguished too soon. In eulogizing Kai, Surfing South Australia shed light on the boy's profound impact on the surfing community. He was not merely a participant. His passion for riding the waves ran deep, rooted in a family with a storied history in South Australia's surfing culture. The post resonated not only as a tribute, but as a testament to the enduring spirit of a young surfer, whose connection to the ocean was interwoven with familial legacies and a profound love for the sport. As the story of Kai Cowley unfolded against the backdrop of Australia's coastal waters, a sobering reality came to light. In this vast expanse, home to over 160 species of sharks, South South Australia stood out for hosting five species deemed dangerous by local authorities. The white shark, the common thresher shark, the shortfin mako shark, the bronze whaler shark, and the dusky shark. These formidable inhabitants of the Southern Ocean contributed to the intricate tapestry of marine life and underscored the inherent risks accompanying human interaction with the sea. The delicate balance between admiration for these creatures and the potential threat they pose becomes increasingly apparent. A glimpse into the broader global context provided by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration revealed that despite the vast diversity of shark species, only a mere dozen had been implicated in attacks on humans. This revelation prompts reflection on the nuanced relationship between humanity and the myriad inhabitants of the world's oceans, urging a reconsideration of the intricate dance between fascination and the ever-present specter of danger lurking beneath the waves. In contemplating the harrowing events at Ethel Beach, it becomes apparent that our relationship with the ocean is a delicate dance, one that extends beyond the confines of any specific narrative. The tragedy of lives lost to the enigmatic depths calls for a broader conversation about how we coexist with the formidable inhabitants of the seas. As we navigate the waves of fascination and danger, it is imperative to seek a harmonious balance that respects both the majesty and potential risks of the ocean. The call for awareness, education, and a nuanced understanding echoes beyond the confines of this specific story, urging us to reflect on our role in the vast and mysterious world that lies beneath the surface. In the wake of the tragic events at Ethel Beach, the profound complexities of our relationship with the ocean demand a deeper exploration. Beyond the confines of Kai Cowley's specific narrative, the haunting shadows cast by fatal shark encounters prompt us to reconsider our coexistence with the formidable inhabitants of the seas. The unsettling backdrop of recent events serves as a poignant reminder that the allure of coastal landscapes is accompanied by an inherent unpredictability. The idyllic facade of serene water hides unseen dangers, and tragic incidents such as Kai's underscore the need for a broader conversation about how we navigate this intricate dance between human recreation and the untamed forces of the Southern Ocean. Extending the gaze beyond the specific tale of Ethel Beach, it is evident that the delicate balance between fascination and danger is a universal challenge. The story is not merely about one surfer's tragic encounter, but serves as a microcosm for the broader dynamics at play in our interaction with the ocean. 
It beckons us to delve into a nuanced exploration of our impact on marine ecosystems, the risks we undertake, and the responsibility we bear for the preservation of both human life and the diverse creatures inhabiting the depths. The broader context of South Australia's coastal waters, which host a variety of shark species deemed dangerous, compels us to confront the intricate tapestry of marine life. This, in turn, raises questions about the sustainability of the recreational activities, the measures in place to ensure safety, and the delicate equilibrium that must be maintained to safeguard both human enthusiasts and the ocean's inhabitants. In navigating the waves of fascination and danger, a call to action emerges. It extends beyond specific incidents, urging us to foster awareness, implement effective educational initiatives, and develop strategies for coexistence. Whether through enhanced beach safety measures or responsible tourism practices, the imperative is to create an environment where the majesty of the ocean can be appreciated without compromising safety or jeopardizing the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. The tragedy at Ethel Beach is a catalyst for a broader dialogue, challenging us to reassess our relationship with the seas on a global scale. It calls for a commitment to understanding, respect, and preservation. A commitment that transcends individual narratives and resonates as a collective responsibility to ensure the coexistence of humanity and the magnificent yet unpredictable depths of the ocean. In the tranquil coastal haven of Willow Bay, in an undisclosed region, the year was 1987. The community was a reservoir of tales, often revolving around the deep, mysterious waters that kissed their shores daily. The ocean was a living entity, a place of wonder and peril, a source of livelihood and a keeper of secrets. At the heart of this narrative was 37-year-old surfer Benjamin Ben Harper. Ben was a seasoned surfer with a deep connection with the sea, a bond nurtured through years of riding the waves. His surfing partner and confidant was Amelia Dawson, a woman of spirit and prudence, who often tempered Ben's adventurous streak with words of caution. On this particular day, the sky was a canvas of azure, dotted with fluffy clouds drifting lazily across the sky. The sea beckoned with a hypnotic allure, drawing Ben and Amelia to its bosom with promises of thrilling rides on the cresting waves. As they prepared to surf, their hearts fluttered with excitement and apprehension, a testament to the unpredictable nature of the ocean. As Ben paddled deeper into the sea, Amelia stayed closer to the shore, her eyes constantly following Ben her heart oscillating between fear and awe. The ocean was a mesmerizing sight, a vast expanse of rolling waves, each powerful and majestic force of nature. Suddenly, the tranquility was shattered as a shark fin broke the surface, moving steadily towards Ben. Panic ensued on the shore as people screamed, trying to alert Ben to the impending danger. Amelia felt her heart in her throat, her eyes wide with fear as she watched the scene unfold. In the face of danger, Ben's survival instincts kicked in. As the shark approached, Ben used his surfboard as a shield, putting it between himself and the shark, a barrier of fiberglass and foam against the might of the predator. The shark circled, coming in close, its snout bumping against the board in a terrifying examination of this strange adversary. With every pass, Ben fought to keep the board positioned between him and the shark, a desperate dance of survival in the deep blue stage of the ocean. It was a battle of wits and agility, a test of courage as Ben maneuvered to avoid the sharp, threatening jaws of the shark. Minutes felt like hours, but Ben's determination and quick thinking kept him one step ahead of the shark. In a heart-stopping moment, the shark lunged, its jaws wide open. Ben pushed the board forcefully into the shark's mouth, the creature biting down on it, giving Ben the precious seconds he needed to paddle furiously towards the shore. As Ben reached the safety of the shore, his body bore scratches and bruises, a testimony to the terrifying encounter. The beach was a scene of relief and awe as people gathered around Ben, their faces reflecting the miracle they had witnessed, a tale of bravery, survival, and the indomitable human spirit. In the aftermath of the harrowing encounter, the community of Willow Bay was abuzz with the tale of Ben Harper, the surfer who had faced one of the ocean's most feared predators and lived to tell the tale. The local media descended upon the small coastal haven, their cameras and microphones eager to capture the first-hand account of a man who had danced with death and emerged victorious. With Amelia steadfastly by his side, Ben narrated the terrifying ordeal. 
His body bore the marks of the encounter, a series of scratches and bruises that painted a vivid picture of his life and death struggle. Yet as he spoke, there was a deep reverence in his voice for the mighty creature of the deep, a respect for its power and role in the intricate web of marine life. As days turned into weeks, Ben embarked on a journey of healing, both physical and emotional. The wounds on his body healed, leaving behind scars that told a story of courage and survival. Yet the mental scars ran deeper, haunting his dreams with visions of sharp teeth and predatory eyes. As time passed, Ben felt a growing urge to reclaim his place among the wave's face and overcome his fears. He embarked on a rigorous training regimen, pushing his body to its limits, determined to regain his lost strength and agility. Months later, the day arrived when Ben felt ready to face the ocean again. With a heart pounding with fear and determination, Ben paddled into the sea, the familiar sensation of the waves rocking him gently as he ventured deeper. As he rode the waves, there was a moment where fear and joy intertwined, a moment of triumph as he successfully rode wave after wave, a testimony to his resilience and courage. The shark encounter had transformed him, forging a man of steel nerves and an unyielding spirit. As he returned to the shore, the community erupted in cheers, their faces glowing with pride and admiration for their local hero. Ben Harper had faced his demons and emerged victorious, a living testament to the indomitable human spirit, a beacon of courage and resilience in the face of adversity, a legend in the making in the heart of Willow Bay. Mia Martin traveled from California to South Africa's untamed coastline to compete in one of the most famous surf competitions in the world. The occasion occurred in Safor Bay, notorious for its long, beautiful waves, and in the middle of the shark region. As a professional surfer, Mia was well aware of the dangers associated with her sport, but she had never experienced anything comparable to what was about to happen. It was now time for the final round, and Mia was competing against some of the most well-known surfers in the world. The low-lying sun gave the vast azure ocean a golden color. Cameras were set to record the exciting action. Attendees lined the shore. The stress was evident because it was the peak of her professional life. As Mia paddled into position anticipating the ideal wave, her heart raced. The waves in Safor Bay are renowned for their clean, strong breaks, and today was no exception. Mia skillfully rode the strong swell with grace and accuracy as a set wave came in. Her movements through the waves were measured and graceful, and the cheers from the audience resounded in her ears. The untamed energy of the water unexpectedly manifested itself among the heat of the competition. A massive, great white shark sprang from the ocean with a thunderous boom, briefly taking everyone's breath away. Its enormous bulk rose majestically against the backdrop of the setting sun, a sight both awe-inspiring and scary. The audience watched in astonishment as the monster submerged into the depths with a loud splash. After the awe-inspiring encounter, a hushed silence settled over the competition. The great white shark's power and primal beauty momentarily eclipsed the rivalry. Adrenaline-pumped surfers and spectators alike couldn't help but marvel at the untamed majesty of the ocean, a reminder that nature's mysteries were boundless and humbling. The other surfers quickly paddled for land as panic rippled through the ocean. Even though Mia moved her board toward safety, it was too late. With its dark eyes fixed on her with a terrifying intensity, the great white had locked onto her. She was alone on her board with the dangerous creature circling her in a couple of seconds. Mia felt her heart tighten with fear, but knew that rash action would only worsen things. Her thoughts racing, she attempted to remember all she had ever learned about encounters with sharks. She had heard that keeping your cool under pressure was essential, and that jerky movements could set off an attack. She was unable to succumb to her terror. The great white shark kept making slow, methodical circles around her, as its dorsal fin sliced through the water's surface like a dagger. The world watched and waited to see how this dreadful encounter would unfold. On the shore, a frantic scramble was in progress. Event planners issued a warning advising attendees to leave the area and seek safety. A media frenzy was developing due to the breaking news, which had already spread like wildfire. Helicopters were buzzing overhead to record the action as it developed. 
As their boats raced through the water, experts and shark trackers sped to the site. They had one objective, protecting Mia and guarding the Great White from damage. They were aware that it was a very crucial moment. They showed dedication to the surfer and the shark by maintaining a precarious balance. Mia returned to the water and tried to keep as motionless as she could, her heart racing. A little tug on her leg reminded her she was not alone in this aquatic environment. The initial confusion caused a slight injury dripping with blood, drawing the shark's attention. Mia's senses sharpened, and her attention sharpened. She was instructed on making her motions as unthreatening as possible by the specialists and trackers, whose voices were soothing and comforting. Even though the situation was uncomfortable, Mia had some hope thanks to everyone's combined experience. Mia's muscles ached, and her mind raced with fear and tenacity as each minute passed. Despite its intimidating presence, the great white shark appeared to lose interest as its circles grew broader and disappeared beneath the water. The tension in the water started to loosen, and a sigh of relief could be heard from everyone. Mia's shaky legs gave way as she walked onto firm ground and was securely led to shore. A rush of medical personnel and reporters greeted her, anxious to hear her terrifying story. She had some minor wounds, but they were a little price to pay for her life. Mia's tale captured the world's attention after that. It was evidence of the ocean's irrationality and the human spirit's tenacity. The majestic and terrifying great white shark had returned to its domain, reminding us that predators and prey must cohabit in the aquatic environment. Mia couldn't help but think back on the incredible events that had taken place as she was treated for her injuries and got medical attention. She had overcome her worst anxieties and come out the other side with a fresh understanding of how delicately the relationship between people and the untamed elements of the ocean. It is a narrative of survival, bravery, and the unbreakable relationship between humans and the underwater world. In the serene embrace of the Caribbean Sea, John Andrews and Nicole White, along with their adorable baby Lily, found themselves enveloped in joy. The family had embarked on a leisurely voyage aboard their quaint yet inviting yacht. It was a radiant afternoon, with the sun casting a golden glow over the tranquil waters, enhancing the bliss of their nautical adventure. John was steering his yacht while Nicole amused her daughter Lily with laughter and shows of all the sea had to offer them. Their little escape, peace, and joy for the moment. The Caribbean Sea was famous for its clear blue water, and that day it sparkled like a sizable sparkling gem under the sun. The family had heard tales about its adventures and beauty. Now they were ready to create happy memories. Nicole held Lily close as they gently traversed the waves. John regaled their daughter with stories about sailors and sea creatures. Lily giggled joyfully. With such clear water they could see fish swim beneath, their scales shimmering like sparkling treasures. However, an unforeseen twist abruptly shattered the idyllic scene. As Nicole, in a moment of excitement, raised Lily to catch a glimpse of the vibrant school of fish darting beneath them, a misstep ensued. In that heart-stopping instant, Lily, her eyes wide with surprise, slipped from Nicole's grasp. As she descended toward the embrace of the azure waters below, time seemed to hang in suspense mirroring the collective breath held by her parents. John turned around just in time to see the horrifying scene and shouted alarmingly. Without hesitation, both parents jumped into the water. An idyllic blue sea that had once seemed welcoming now felt more threatening than ever. As they dived in, a mysterious dark shadow loomed nearby. A shark, drawn to sudden splashes. John noticed it first, his eyes widening in fear. Nicole reached Lily first and brought her safely up to the surface. Lily began crying out in terror, yet felt secure in Nicole's embrace. John began swimming towards them, ready to return them to the yacht, when the aggressive shark came closer. John took decisive action, placing himself between his family and the shark and being ready to defend them at all costs, thus changing their lives forever. John was struck with intense pain when a shark bit his leg, yet despite this terrifying moment, his only thought was for Nicole and Lily's safety. Pushing through the pain, he helped Nicole retrieve Lily back onto the yacht while bleeding profusely into the ocean water. Nicole and John returned to their yacht. With John suffering a severe leg injury and their hearts racing, they realized the gravity of their situation. Miles from any land with limited resources to help them, 
facing an acute medical crisis with limited medical aid available. Sunlight still cast golden hues over the water, but for them, life was far from picturesque. Nicole inhaled deeply, attempting to soothe her frantic heartbeat, understanding the urgency of their situation. Despite the fear coursing through her, she conveyed a need for immediate action. John, marked by distress yet resolute, acknowledged her silent plea with a nod, determination shining in his gaze. First, they needed to stop John's bleeding. Nicole located more bandages and antiseptic in the first aid kit and carefully treated John's wound. Lily sensed this tension and started crying again. Yet this time, her pleas for comfort were met with gentle reassurance rather than panic. Next, they needed to find their way back home. John managed to navigate the yacht with Nicole's help despite his injuries. They set a course toward an island nearby, knowing every second would count. Nicole took turns steering and caring for Lily and John with strength and resolved to keep moving forward. As darkness descended upon them and the sea darkened further, only stars above could simultaneously illuminate such an expansive, beautiful, and terrifying sky. Nicole kept an ardent watch over all horizons for any sign of land or passing ships. Hours passed and a light appeared on the horizon as their hope began to dim. At first it was faint. As they approached closer, however, it grew brighter and brighter until finally becoming visible as a beacon leading them safely home. It was the light from a lighthouse that led them safely home. As dawn broke, they finally returned to shore, exhausted, scared, but alive. John was immediately taken to a hospital where his leg received care that saved his family. Doctors noted their achievement as being truly remarkable. Experiences such as this transformed the Andrews family in unforgettable ways. John's recovery was long and arduous, yet it brought them closer together as they recognized just how quickly life can change in an instant. Nicole often thought back to that day on the Caribbean Sea when fear, struggle, and relief came together with family bond strength, reminding herself of how powerfully connected their love was. Lily had grown up listening to stories of their adventure and her parents' courage, learning the value of courage and family ties early. Though they would never forget the fear and pain experienced that day, they also remembered its beauty. Sea breezes, warm sun rays, and shared precious moments. Lily took comfort in hearing these tales of her family's adventure and knew the value of courage and family bonds. The Andrews family's epic tale of survival, love, and unbreakable bonds kept them close through life's most challenging trials. Together they knew they could weather any storm. In 1995, Elena Monroe and her diving partner, Dr. Ethan Sawyer, were preparing to embark on another adventure while on Haven Isle. It was a bright and sunny morning. Their objective was to investigate the migration routes taken by great white sharks. Haven Isle proved to be an ideal location for this kind of investigation. Elena and Ethan were trailblazers in marine biology, and their enthusiasm for the water had no bounds. As they dropped into the glistening waters on their yacht, the world's splendor under the surface gradually revealed itself to them. While beautiful rays floated effortlessly through the currents, schools of brilliantly colored fish rushed about the coral reefs. But on this particular day, Elena noticed something unusual that drew her attention. A vast shadow was seen gliding gently across the depths of the room. Although it appeared to be a great white shark, there was something unusual about it. Elena had never seen anything like the markings on the animal's back before. The enigma of this creature so enthralled Elena that she decided to mark it for later investigation. Elena's stomach began to flip as she got closer to the shark and she experienced a tingling sensation of exhilaration mixed with anxiety. It gave off the impression of being interested yet wary simultaneously, as though it knew she was there for more than mere observation. She proceeded to affix the tracking device to the shark's fin in an organized manner. She was unaware that the shark was uncomfortable while the tag was attached. In a matter of seconds, the peaceful environment of the undersea world erupted into mayhem. Elena and Ethan were in the path of the shark's oncoming charge when it became belligerent and began to thrash its gigantic body. Even though they could return to the research yacht in time, the experience perplexed them. This was not the typical behavior of a shark. Elena and Ethan studied the data from the tag once they had returned to the yacht. 
The distinctive markings on the shark allowed the researchers to determine that it was the same individual that they had seen five years before. However, it had grown to a monster size since then. The data also showed that the shark was in agony. They suggested that the shark's aggressive behavior was a reaction to the injury produced by the tagging procedure. As they deliberated on what course of action to take, word arrived on the island of a shark attack. The tourists quickly panicked and the locals became concerned about their well-being. The experienced sailor in charge of the Atlantis Explorer, Captain Marcus Fletcher, volunteered to assist the people doing the research. The squad needed to rush to protect the people who lived on the island. Elena, Ethan, Captain Fletcher, and Mia, a young reporter covering the trip who was known for her daring and adventurous spirit, came together to formulate a strategy. They had to devise a plan to coax the hostile shark away from the populated regions and back into the open waters where it belonged. The crew used improved technology and materials to create a realistic-looking decoy, hoping to attract the shark and cause it to swim away from the island. Mia offered to play the decoy role because of her extensive knowledge of marine life, making her the ideal choice for the job. The crew quickly implemented their strategy while it was still dark outside. While Mia courageously took her place in the water, the others maintained a tight check on the tracking data to keep track of the shark's movements. The shark followed the decoy as it made its slow journey away from the island where it had been placed. The team watched with bated breath as the shark got fixated on the decoy, becoming oblivious to its surroundings. Elena and Ethan turned on the tracking device as soon as they entered deeper water. This allowed them to observe the shark's activity while remaining at a safe distance. They were taken aback when they saw a change in the manner in which the shark was behaving. It had rediscovered some dormant instinct since it became less aggressive and more interested. It moved fluidly through the open sea, its muscular physique sliding through the water currents. The results of the group's labor were satisfactory. The shark had successfully navigated safely back to its natural home from human habitation. Elena and Ethan felt relieved when they realized they had saved the islanders' lives and brought the shark some tranquility. The crew of the Atlantis Explorer gathered around on its deck as the sun began to rise on a new day to discuss the incredible journey they had just completed. Mia documented the entirety of the trip on film and is now prepared to reveal this wild tale to the world. In the days that followed, word of the mysterious shark and the brave squad that fought it and preserved their island quickly went worldwide. Elena, Ethan, Captain Fletcher, and Mia came to be regarded as heroes because their stories encouraged others to value and preserve the ocean's natural beauty. The event had a significant and long-lasting effect on each squad member. Elena and Ethan's dedication to their studies increased, and they prioritized safeguarding marine life and maintaining the integrity of delicate ecosystems. On Haven Isle, Captain Fletcher persevered to encourage environmentally conscious vacationing and conservation work. And as she shed light on the secrets of the natural world, Mia's passion for storytelling grew even stronger. Those who witnessed Elena Monroe and the majestic shark have their memory permanently marked by the mystery surrounding them. Because of this, the wild tale of the shark that had eaten a woman who had jumped off her yacht took an unexpected turn evolving into a compelling narrative about compassion, understanding, and the unbreakable relationship between humans and the wild. In the vast, winding waterways of the Florida Everglades, a unique adventure awaited Tom Bennett, an enthusiastic kayaker with a passion for exploring the uncharted. The Everglades, known for their sprawling mangroves and diverse wildlife, were a kayaker's paradise. Having explored various water bodies across the United States, Tom was drawn to the Everglades for their serene beauty and the thrill of navigating through their complex network of channels. On a warm morning in July 2023, Tom set out with his kayak, equipped with essentials and his trusty waterproof camera. He planned to navigate through the less traveled paths of the mangroves, hoping to capture the raw beauty of this natural haven. The air was thick with chirping birds and rustling leaves, a symphony of life thriving in the wetlands. Tom's kayak glided smoothly over the calm, shallow waters, the green canopy of the mangroves casting dappled shadows on the surface. He was in awe of the peacefulness that enveloped him, 
a stark contrast to the hustle of city life he was used to. His camera clicked away, capturing herons in flight and the occasional alligator basking in the sun. As he ventured deeper into the mangroves, the channels became narrower, the canopy overhead more dense. The sunlight struggled to penetrate through the thick foliage, creating a play of light and shadow on the water. Tom was vigilant, aware that the shallow waters could hide unexpected dangers. Without warning, the water beside his kayak stirred. At first, Tom thought it was a fish or a small alligator, familiar sights in the Everglades. But then he saw a fin cutting through the water gracefully. A chill ran down his spine. It was a bull shark, notorious for its aggression and ability to thrive in salt and freshwater. Tom knew he had to remain calm. Bull sharks were known to be unpredictable, and he had limited options in the confined space of the narrow channel. He stopped paddling, hoping the shark would lose interest and move on. But the shark continued to circle his kayak, its dorsal fin slicing through the murky water. Tom's heart pounded as he slowly reached for his camera. If he was going to have a close encounter with one of nature's most formidable predators, he wanted to document it. He snapped a few photos, his hands trembling slightly. The shark seemed almost curious, its movements deliberate as it inspected the strange object in its territory. For several long minutes, Tom and the shark shared the channel. Tom remained still, avoiding sudden movements that might trigger an attack. He was acutely aware that the kayak offered little protection against the power of a bull shark. Just as suddenly as it had appeared, the shark lost interest and swam away, disappearing into the depths of the mangroves. Tom let out a breath he didn't realize he had been holding. He waited a few moments, ensuring the shark was gone, before he began to paddle again, his strokes cautious and measured. Tom's paddle cut through the water with newfound urgency. The encounter with the bull shark had left him rattled, but he was determined not to let fear overshadow his adventure. He navigated through the winding mangroves, the tranquility of the environment belying the adrenaline still coursing through his veins. As he moved into a broader channel, the sunlight broke through the canopy, casting a warm glow over the water. Tom's eyes scanned the surface, half expecting to see the shark's fin reappear. But all seemed calm, the only movement coming from pelicans diving for fish. Tom's mind replayed the earlier encounter. He knew bull sharks were one of the few shark species that could survive in freshwater, making the Everglades an ideal habitat for them. They were elusive, though, and sightings were rare. Tom felt awe and respect for the creature he had just encountered, a living embodiment of nature's adaptability and strength. Lost in his thoughts, Tom didn't notice the shadow that lurked beneath the water, following his kayak silently. It was the bull shark, its curiosity not yet satisfied. Without warning, the shark surged upwards, its powerful body slamming into the bottom of the kayak. Tom was thrown off balance, his paddle slipping from his hands and clattering against the kayak. Water splashed into the vessel as it rocked violently. The shark's dorsal fin emerged again, circling for another pass. Tom's heart raced. He knew he was in a precarious situation. A capsized kayak would leave him vulnerable in the shark's domain. He scrambled to stabilize the kayak, trying to retrieve his paddle. Encouraged by the commotion, the shark bumped the kayak again, this time with more force. Tom clung to the sides, his knuckles white. He realized he had to get out of the shark's territory. With a deep breath, Tom started to paddle with his hands, steering the kayak towards a nearby bank. The shark followed, its fin cutting through the water at alarming speed. Tom paddled harder, his arms burning with the effort. As he neared the bank, the shark made one final attempt, its jaws snapping close to the kayak's edge. Tom felt the vibration of its powerful bite, a reminder of how close he was to danger. With a few more desperate strokes, he reached the shallow waters near the bank, the bottom of the kayak scraping against the muddy floor. Tom didn't stop until he had dragged the kayak onto solid ground. He collapsed beside it, breathing heavily, his body trembling from the adrenaline and exertion. He was safe, but the reality of what had just happened was sinking in. He had survived a close encounter with one of nature's most efficient predators. As he sat there gathering his strength, Tom's eyes fell on his camera. The photos he had taken earlier would be a testament to his incredible experience. He felt a newfound respect for the natural world and its inhabitants, a reminder of the delicate balance between humans and wildlife. 
Tom eventually returned to civilization, his story becoming a topic of discussion among the local kayaking and conservation communities. He shared his experience not to incite fear, but to promote understanding and respect for the wildlife of the Everglades, especially its more formidable residents. The story of Tom's encounter in the Everglades spread, a tale of adventure, respect, and the unpredictability of nature. It served as a reminder to all who ventured into the wilderness to admire from a distance, to respect the habitat of these wild creatures, and always to be aware of the silent fins that may be lurking in the murky waters. In the murky waters off the coast of Grand Isle, Louisiana, the relentless dance between man and nature took a harrowing turn on a fateful Friday. A routine fishing expedition turned into a life-altering ordeal as a 64-year-old crew member, weathered by the challenges of the sea, plummeted into the abyss below. The unforgiving jaws of fate closed in with startling swiftness as the cold embrace of the ocean gave way to the visceral sting of a shark's bite. The U.S. Coast Guard, stalwart guardians of maritime safety, were thrust into a race against time to save the life of a seasoned seafarer, now left in critical condition. The incident, a chilling reminder of the dangerous coexistence between humanity and the untamed depths, unfurled a tale that goes beyond the immediate struggle for survival. It beckoned the audience to the heart of the maritime battleground, where every ripple in the water conceals the capricious forces that shape destinies and tests the indomitable spirit of those who call the sea their own. In the calm embrace of the night, the fishing vessel Moonglow, a stalwart voyager in the vastness of the Gulf of Mexico, became the unwitting stage for a maritime ordeal that would etch its narrative into the annals of the sea. The seasoned crew member dedicatedly served aboard the Moonglow, navigating the unpredictable waters off Grand Isle, Louisiana. The serenity of the moonlit expanse shattered when routine maintenance tasks turned into a dangerous dance with destiny. As the vessel cruised about 35 miles southeast of Grand Isle, the crewman, grappling with the entangled nets around the propeller, found himself trapped in a life-altering confrontation. In a cruel twist of fate, he tumbled overboard, the cold embrace of the ocean awaiting him. A call to the Coast Guard sector New Orleans, punctuating the silence at 12.51 a.m., transmitted the urgency of the situation. A crew member was attacked by a shark, a severe leg injury painting a stark portrait of the struggle unfolding beneath the waves. The moon glow, once a vessel of routine maritime tasks, now stood witness to a saga that transcended the ordinary, unraveling, profound mysteries hidden beneath the surface of the sea. The crew member dedicated to his craft had inadvertently become a protagonist in a story that resonated with the unpredictable nature of the marine world. The unknown size and species of the shark added an air of ominous uncertainty, encapsulating the essence of the untamed deep. As Coast Guard officials responded to the distress call, the waters off Grand Isle transformed into a theater of survival. On this battle, ground, the indomitable human spirit clashed with the enigmatic denizens of the ocean. The moon glow, a witness to the collision between man and nature, now carried the weight of a narrative that beckoned the audience into the heart of maritime uncertainty, where every ripple in the water concealed the capricious forces shaping destinies in the dark expanse below. In the crucible of crisis, where the moonlit expanse off Grand Isle held its breath, the crew members aboard the moon glow emerged as unsung heroes, their swift and decisive actions transcending Ending the chaos that unfolded beneath the stars. Confronted with the visceral aftermath of their crewmate's partially amputated leg following the harrowing shark attack, they became beacons of resilience and resourcefulness. The application of a tourniquet, a makeshift lifeline in the throes of adversity, became their urgent imperative, a desperate bid to staunch the tide of blood and maintain a fragile flicker of hope. The radio waves crackled with the urgency of their distress call. A plea for intervention reverberating across the expansive oceanic expanse. Coast Guard watchstanders, navigating the delicate balance between life and limb, sought counsel from the duty flight surgeon, an oracle in the critical art of medical decision-making. The unanimous recommendation for a medical evacuation became the lifeline for the imperiled crew member, a beacon of hope cutting through the darkness of uncertainty. In response, a Coast Guard air station, New Orleans helicopter descended upon the moon glow's turbulent stage, its rotor blades slicing through the night air as the crew raced against time. The dramatic rescue unfolded like a carefully choreographed ballet of urgency, 
The helicopter crew, like guardian angels in the Tempest, orchestrated their roles with precision. A Coast Guard rescue swimmer descending into the tumultuous waters brought with him a realm of expertise. His skilled hands administered crucial first aid, navigating the delicate dance of saving a life in the shadow of danger. A new tourniquet, a symbol of tenacity and hope, was deftly applied. A lifeline cinched around the beleaguered limb, a testament to the indomitable human spirit. In a synchronized ascent, the crew hoisted the injured man from the clutches of the deep, cradling him in the secure embrace of the helicopter's cabin. The rhythmic hum of the rotor blades marked a heartbeat of hope as the Coast Guard helicopter soared into the night sky, carrying the survivor toward the threshold of medical intervention. The moon glow, bearing witness to a saga of resilience and camaraderie, sailed on through the darkened waters, the echoes of the extraordinary rescue reverberating in its wake. In the heart of this maritime battleground, where the unpredictable forces of nature clash with human grit, the indelible mark of the Moon Glow's crew was etched into the night, a testament to courage and determination in the face of the unknown. Embarking on a marine odyssey through the Gulf of Mexico unveils a diverse tapestry of at least 24 shark species meticulously cataloged by the University of Florida. In the northern expanse of the Gulf, the elusive nurse sharks carve a niche, their docile presence contrasting with the dynamic ecosystem that thrives beneath the waves. There, it is not uncommon to encounter the distinctive silhouettes of various hammerhead sharks, adding an element of mystique to the sun-dappled waters. As the currents carry on, the salty embrace of these gulf waters becomes a haven for a pantheon of shark species, including the formidable bull sharks, the majestic tiger sharks, and the swift black-tip sharks, each playing a crucial role in the intricate ballet of marine life. While the Gulf of Mexico occasionally hosts the iconic great white sharks, their sightings are a rarity, attributed to their preference for calmer waters. These marine titans, often vilified in popular culture, contribute to the delicate ecological equilibrium of the Gulf's submerged realm. Against this backdrop of marine diversity, the Global Shark Attack File, meticulously maintained by the Shark Research Institute, offers a glimpse into the seldom-glimpsed confrontation between humans and these denizens of the deep. In the ongoing narrative of the Gulf, the file reveals that, aside from the recent Moon Glow crew member incident, only two other shark attacks have been documented this year. One such episode unfolded on August 28th at Galveston Island, Texas, where an 11-year-old boy became the victim of a small shark's bite, adding a poignant footnote to the enigmatic narrative beneath the azure surface. As the Gulf continues to harbor these awe-inspiring creatures, their presence beckons exploration and understanding, challenging preconceptions, and urging a reconsideration of the intricate relationship between humankind and the marine world. In the unfolding chronicle of shark-human encounters, another incident marked the annals on July 17th, when a 14-year-old boy faced a brush with a shark near Grayton Beach State Park in Florida. The encounter, categorized by the Walton County Sheriff's Office as a superficial bite, left the young swimmer with wounds that fortunately were not deemed life-threatening. As the news rippled through the community, the Sheriff's Office assumed a role of reassurance, emphasizing in a Facebook post that the intent was not to sow fear or induce panic. Instead, the post served as a reminder of the symbiotic relationship between humans and sharks in the waters they call home. The Sheriff's Office conveyed that they were making the public aware by stating that sharks lived in the water and that that was their home, so they were making the public aware so that they may use caution when swimming in the water where sharks lived underscoring the need for vigilance and coexistence in the fluid realm where two worlds converge. In the tapestry of recent shark encounters, the incident stood as poignant reminders of the delicate coexistence between humans and these marine inhabitants. The juxtaposition of superficial bites and the resilience displayed by those involved paints a nuanced picture of the ongoing narrative beneath the azure waters. As authorities seek to inform and caution the public, the incidents prompt reflection on the shared space that humans and sharks inhabit in the vast expanse of the ocean. It is a reminder, urging communities to navigate these waters with both awe and vigilance, recognizing the inherent complexities of the dynamic relationship between humanity and the dangerous creatures of the sea. In the picturesque coastal settlement of Coral Ridge, in an undisclosed corner of the world, the year was 1975. The community was a tight-knit group, sharing tales and adventures revolving around the deep blue sea that was both a playground and a mystery, a place of beauty and danger. 
At the heart of this narrative was 37-year-old surfer Gregory Greg Jensen. Greg was a seasoned surfer, his life rhythmically aligned with the sea's ebb and flow. His confidant and fellow surfer was his sister Laura Jensen, a woman of courage and caution, who often reminded Greg of the sea's unpredictable nature. On a day that promised golden sunshine and perfect waves, Greg and Laura met at their cherished spot on the beach, their spirits buoyed by the prospect of riding the magnificent waves that beckoned them. The sea was a mesmerizing entity, a vast canvas of undulating waves inviting them to become one with its rhythm. As they ventured into the sea, Laura enjoyed the smaller waves near the shore while Greg, driven by a spirit of adventure, paddled further into the deep where the waves promised a thrilling ride. But the idyllic day took a sudden turn when a shark fin emerged from the depths, moving ominously closer to Greg. On the shore, a fisherman noticed the danger and sounded a loud horn, alerting others to the impending danger. Laura's heart raced, her eyes filled with fear as she realized her brother's peril. Greg remained remarkably calm as the shark approached, his years of experience in the sea guiding his actions. Instead of panicking, he tried to retreat slowly, but the shark was faster, suddenly lunging and biting onto the edge of Greg's surfboard. It was a heart-stopping moment, a confrontation between man and beast in the heart of the sea. Greg fought to keep his balance as the shark tugged on the board, a tug of war between humans and nature. Greg kicked at the water desperately, creating a splash that momentarily distracted the shark, giving him a precious window to paddle furiously towards the shore. With a heart pounding in his chest, Greg seized the moment to paddle back to the shore, his body shaking from the adrenaline and fear. As he reached the safety of the shore, the community gathered, their faces a canvas of relief and awe, a tale of survival etched in every line of Greg's face. In the wake of the terrifying encounter, the small community of Coral Ridge was a whirlpool of emotions, with Greg Jensen at its epicenter. The local populace gathered in small groups, their conversations dominated by the harrowing tale of a surfer who had faced one of the ocean's most feared creatures and lived to tell the story. Still shaken but steady, Greg recounted the ordeal to friends, family, and strangers who approached him with curious eyes and concerned questions. His surfboard bore the evidence of the encounter, a jagged edge where the shark had left its mark, a silent testament to the danger he had faced. As the days progressed, Greg grappled with the trauma, the vivid memories of the shark's cold, predatory eyes haunting his dreams. The physical wounds were minor, a series of scratches and bruises that would heal with time. However, the psychological scars ran deeper, a constant reminder of the fine line between adventure and catastrophe. Laura encouraged him to talk about the experience to share his fears and anxieties, a therapeutic process that gradually helped lessen the traumatic event's burden. The community rallied around him, their support manifesting in various ways, from warm meals delivered to his doorstep to heartfelt letters of encouragement. It was a collective healing, a community drawing closer in the face of adversity, their bonds strengthened through shared concern and relief. As weeks turned into months, Greg found solace in different avenues. He took to painting, his canvases filled with swirling blues and greens, a therapeutic exploration of his deep connection with the sea, now viewed from a safe distance. Once a source of joy and adventure, the ocean became a muse for his art, a way to reconnect with the deep blue without venturing into its depths. Greg also became an advocate for shark conservation, channeling his experience into raising awareness about the misunderstood creatures of the deep. He collaborated with local organizations, sharing his story to promote a message of respect and understanding for the ocean and its inhabitants. As time passed, the terrifying encounter became a story of resilience and growth, a testament to the human spirit's ability to overcome fear and trauma. Greg Jensen emerged not as a victim but as a survivor, a man who had faced the ocean's raw power and come out with a deeper understanding and respect for the mysterious world beneath the waves. A man transformed, carrying the tale of that fateful day in Coral Ridge with a spirit of strength and wisdom. When she set foot on the Owaiki Beach in Hawaii, Margaret felt transported to paradise. Calm, crystal-clear seas lapped long stretches of smooth golden sands. 
The leaves of the palm trees made complex patterns against the turquoise sky as they waved lazily. The pleasant aroma of tropical flowers permeated the air, while ukuleles playing in the distance contributed to the beautiful ambiance. This little piece of heaven was bathed in a magnificent glow as the sun painted the horizon in shades of orange and pink. This was the evergreen beauty of Owaiki Beach. Margaret Brown was a spirited 21-year-old surfer who had always been drawn to the thrill of riding the waves. Surfing was more than just a pastime to her growing up on Hawaii's scenic coastline. It was a way of life. At Owaiki Beach, a destination renowned for its beautiful sea and famous waves, Margaret had spent endless hours perfecting her surfing skills. But she had no idea that a fatal encounter with a predator would put her bravery and tenacity to the ultimate test. Margaret and her younger brother Jake decided to hit the waves one bright morning. They both loved to surf, and Owaiki Beach served as their hangout. The turquoise seas were bathed in a warm glow from the sun, which was high in the sky. The weather was ideal for catching waves and making priceless memories. Together, Margaret and Jake paddled out, their boards flowing effortlessly over the mild surf. As the saline breeze fluffed her blonde hair, Margaret surveyed the horizon for the ideal wave. She had no idea her carefree day in the sun would soon take a terrifying turn. As Margaret paddled into position, she felt excitement coursing through her veins. The waves at Owaiki Beach were known for their power and beauty. She reveled in every ride. She could feel the rhythm of the ocean beneath her, a connection to something larger than herself. However, a sudden, unanticipated force disrupted Margaret's happy moment while riding a particularly alluring wave. A black tip reef shark rushed out of the water with lightning speed, its razor-sharp jaws choking on her arm. Her body screamed in pain and she felt terror rise. Jake, who was nearby, watched in horror as his sister was dragged under the water. He struggled to reach her while screaming for assistance as adrenaline pumped through his body. Beachgoers heard his calls and immediately called for help from the lifeguards. Margaret struggled with the pain of the shark bite below the water's surface. Her best chance of surviving lay in maintaining her composure, she knew. She worked incredibly hard to free her hurt arm from the shark's hold. The water was stained with blood, yet she kicked frantically to rise to the surface. The lifeguards sped to the scene, their jet skis slicing through the surf as they arrived. They created a safety bubble around Jake and Margaret, defending them from the shark's circling motion. They lifted Margaret onto a jet ski with delicacy and precision, her hurt arm aching with pain. With a worried and relieved expression on his face, Jake gripped her closely. As Margaret was injured, a group of dedicated medical specialists worked non-stop to treat her at the hospital. Although she had suffered severe injuries from the shark attack and had a protracted road to recovery, her spirit had not been affected. Despite the difficulties, she was adamant that she would resume her beloved activity. Over the next month, Margaret spent much time in physical therapy and rehab. Her arm started to heal and she began to feel better. Her family, friends, and the surfing world stuck by her every step of the way. They knew how much Margaret loved the ocean and trusted her to keep going. Two months after the meeting changed her life, Margaret stood on Owaiki Beach again with her surfboard under her arm. The exhilaration and anxiety were mixed in her heart, but she knew she had to resist letting her fear rule her. She was desperate to regain the water because it had always been her haven. Margaret paddled out again as the light warmly began to glow on the horizon. The waves greeted her like they always had, and she was incredibly grateful to have the chance to surf them once more. She was reminded of why she first fell in love with surfing by the salty breeze, the pulsing waves, and the vast horizon. Margaret took strength and tenacity to return to the waves but succeeded. She understood that difficulties would always be part of life, but the ocean had shown her that she could face any difficulty head-on if she had grit and steadfast spirit. As she paddled the waves that had previously been the scene of her terrifying ordeal, she felt a tremendous sense of liberty and a newfound connection to the ocean that had always been her true home. Margaret's strength and self-assurance increased as the months went by. Her tenacity served as an example for others, a reminder of the human spirit's indomitable nature. She developed into a champion for shark conservation, utilizing her knowledge to spread the word about the value of coexisting peacefully with these magnificent animals. 
In addition to doing it for the excitement, Margaret continued chasing the waves to remember the ocean that had given her so much. Her adventure served as a monument to the strength of perseverance and the unbreakable relationship that exists between a surfer and the vast, unpredictably changing underwater world. It was a narrative of survival, bravery, and abiding love for the sea that would be passed down through the generations. Anna Brooks set sail into the vast and open expanse of the Pacific Ocean, where the ocean meets the sky in an undulating horizon, on an adventure and self-discovery voyage. Navigating these uncharted waters was thrilling. She also sought greater insight into herself and what was possible within herself. Anna had meticulously prepared for this grand journey aboard Endeavor, her sturdy yacht home and companion on this grand journey. Stocking up with supplies and ensuring Endeavor was in top condition were crucial tasks she must complete to prepare for what lay ahead. As Anna set sail from the coast and left harbor safety behind her, excitement and anticipation surged within her as the vast ocean spread, offering endless possibilities and challenges that lay in wait. Days turned to weeks as Anna bravely navigated calm seas and faced storms with equal courage. She marveled at the ocean, its magnificent sunsets that painted the sky in vibrant hues, and starry nights that seemed close enough for touch. Anna found this journey everything she'd imagined, an affirmation of her spirit and affection for the sea. As she explored the open waters, an unexpected challenge presented below. An enormous whale shark attacked Endeavor, mistakenly thinking it was a rival or threat. This sudden and frightening incident caused significant damage to the Endeavor. Water flooded in, and essential supplies were irretrievably lost to the ocean depths. Anna was shaken but unbroken as she assessed the damage. Once a reliable shelter, her yacht now featured. Any remaining food and fresh water supplies quickly depleted, placing Anna in an overwhelming situation far from civilization and help. As fear and isolation grew, Anna became aware that her journey of adventure had now become one of survival. What had once been an endless source of wonder now seemed more like an impossible wilderness. Still, Anna wasn't one for giving up. Drawing upon her resilience and skills she'd honed over years of sailing as she devised a plan to rescue herself and her beloved yacht. Anna worked tirelessly to repair Endeavor, using whatever materials were available and rationing what supplies remained. Knowing that each day brought new challenges, Anna became more determined than ever to survive and return to civilization against all odds. Anna was faced with one of her toughest tests yet in the vast Pacific Ocean with its unpredictable moods and hidden dangers. Yet, with all its perils, Anna knew her fire of determination was undaunted, as was her love of sea life that no obstacle could dim. With eyes set upon the horizon, she knew this journey wasn't over. Instead, it would prove an ultimate test of courage as they battled for survival in its depths. Anna Brooks approached the Pacific Ocean with a determination that matched its endless waves. Every day brought unique challenges. Navigating without her primary equipment, dealing with fatigue, and keeping the yacht afloat. Loneliness could have overtaken her. Instead, she found strength in loving this vast sea and her desire to return home safely. Anna was in an increasingly desperate situation as days turned into nights and back into days. Although the yacht was holding together, fresh water was becoming scarcer by the day. Therefore, she relied on collecting rainwater using makeshift systems involving tarpaulins and containers while hoping that rainfall might come eventually, praying that any drop was drinkable. Anna found hope when she ran into a pod of dolphins that danced around Endeavor, their playful leaps and chirps providing a moment of relief and hope. Being around them reminded Anna she wasn't as alone as she thought. Ocean life offered companionship and renewed hope. Anna was taken aback when one late afternoon as the sun set over the horizon, casting its golden glow over the sea, she noticed a ship off course heading in her direction and sent out an emergency signal that cut through the darkness to reach out and touch. To her great relief, it turned out to be an ocean cargo vessel crossing Pacific waters that changed course to come directly towards her instead of passing by on a different course altogether. As soon as the crew of a cargo ship realized Anna needed immediate aid, they offered assistance to help her survive her experience with a whale shark. Anna's yacht was taken under tow and she received medical care, 
food and water while sharing her story with them through this shared understanding of sea life. Back on land, Anna's incredible tale of survival against all odds in the vast Pacific Ocean became a testament to human resilience and adventurous spirit. Though her journey had taken an unnerving turn, it highlighted incredible experiences and nature's breathtaking natural world. Anna's voyage didn't just end when she safely returned. It also marked a new chapter in her life. Her encounter with the whale shark, its struggle for survival and unexpected rescue, taught her invaluable lessons about humility, strength, respect for nature's forces, and respect for its forces of nature. Anna Brooks knew her connection to the sea would remain strong. As she gazed over its vast, untamed beauty, she could feel its tug of promise pull at her repeatedly. Armed with new wisdom and increased respect for its unpredictable waters, she would set sail once more armed with new knowledge and more respect than ever. Anna's tale would become legendary and remain relevant among those who dare face its vast, untamed beauty. The picturesque seaside community of Port La Serena was a haven for the well-to-do because of its abundant sunshine and emerald waters, which made it an appealing vacation destination. The opulent yacht Serenity's Grace, which belonged to Olivia Dawson and was anchored in the water off the coast of the Mediterranean Sea on a sultry morning in the summer of 2008, was enjoying the sun's radiance. Olivia had invited Dr. Alexandra Alex Crawford, a well-known marine biologist, to join her and her entourage on a cruise. Olivia's extravagant lifestyle frequently drew the attention of the media, and she wished that the presence of Alex would provide an opportunity to demonstrate her concern for the welfare of marine life and the environment. Alex could not shake the unpleasant feeling that something wasn't right as the yacht cruised leisurely in the distance. Her intuition led her to believe that the waters encircled Port La Serena held mysteries, and she was determined to discover what they were. Olivia's glitzy cocktail parties, and her steady stream of distractions prevented Alex from immediately delving into the issue. One night, when the guests were enjoying themselves at a party under the stars, a story began that a woman had vanished after diving off the yacht. It was speculated in hushed tones that the dreaded Serenian predator was responsible for the catastrophe. Alex believed that the story of the monster shark was just a myth perpetuated by the community to lure in tourists. Although the story of the monster shark had been told for decades, she still did not believe it. Alex was motivated to take action as a result of the disappearance. She teamed up with Captain Benjamin Ben Chambers, a seasoned sailor with a profound understanding of the ocean's secrets, and Detective Victor Morales, a seasoned investigator with a flair for uncovering perplexing puzzles. Together, they were able to find the truth about what had happened. They banded together to form an improbable alliance with the common goal of learning the truth about what was going on. During their inquiry, Alex and her team dug into the past of Port La Serena. They found a pattern of inexplicable disappearances stretching back to the 1800s. The stories recalled eerie legends of a huge shark that was claimed to stalk the waterways, taking its prey with deadly accuracy. These tales were said to have been passed down from generation to generation. Alex and her pals unearthed a more sinister reality as they worked through the riddle. The Serenian Predator wasn't simply a legendary creature. It was a crafty ruse designed by a cunning and evil group of individuals who utilized the town's terror to cover up their unlawful activities. They used the town's fear to cover up their criminal activities. The disappearances were always seen at the same time as substantial smuggling operations that were being carried out in the region. The perpetrators of the crime employed the urban legend of the Serenian Predator to deflect attention away from their actions by casting the gigantic shark in the offender's role. They went so far as to hire people to dress up as sharks and stage fake attacks to perpetuate the notion further. The people who were behind the lies orchestration opposed Alex, Ben, and Victor after they revealed the truth. The criminals were affluent folks who had a stranglehold over the town's economy and the local media. They were getting closer to the fact that Alex's life was in jeopardy, and their inquiry transformed into a potentially deadly game of cat and mouse. Alex and her team persisted in their mission despite the risks involved. They did this by collecting evidence, documenting the stories of eyewitnesses, 
and unraveling the web of deceit that the conspirators had built. Olivia Dawson, disillusioned by the dishonesty that surrounded her, decided to take the side of the investigators, which exposed the extent of her fragility, although she presented herself as wealthy. The pivotal truth revealed to the village's citizens was an exciting payoff for their tension. The true villains were uncovered and brought to light, and their deception-based empire was brought to its knees. The criminals were made to suffer the repercussions of their acts, which satisfied the need for justice. As the narrative drew close, Port La Serena started recovering from the scars its troubled past left. The town came together to express thanks because Alex, Ben, and Victor demonstrated bravery and tenacity. After Olivia realized her true purpose in life, she vowed to defend the ocean she had previously exploited by donating her fortune to environmental charities and committing to do so. It's possible that the Serenian predator was just a legend. Still, the truth about the dangerous creatures that lurked in the shadows had been uncovered. Thanks to their bravery and tenacity, Alex and her team were able to change the tide, ensuring that the waters of Port La Serena would remain untamed but free from fear. Ultimately, the story was not just about a shark killing a woman after she leaped off her yacht and into the water below. It was a tale of bravery on the part of individuals, the telling of the truth, and the tenacity of a community bound together by a shared desire for justice and redemption. In the tranquil summer of 2001, the coastal town of Emerald Bay, known for its pristine waters and abundant marine life, became the backdrop for a harrowing tale of survival. The narrative centers on the luxurious yacht Sea Odyssey, owned by the wealthy and enigmatic Richard Stanton. Richard had organized an exclusive yacht party to celebrate his latest business venture, inviting a select group of influential guests. Among the invitees was Emily Harris, a respected marine biologist renowned for her groundbreaking research on shark behavior. Emily's invitation was a deliberate choice by Richard, who was eager to discuss potential collaborations with her. The yacht drifted through the calm waters as evening descended, adorned with elegant decor and lively guests. The setting sun casts a golden glow, creating a picturesque scene. The air was alive with music, laughter, and the clinking of glasses. Emily felt out of place amidst the lavishness. Her thoughts were with the mysterious depths below them. Unbeknownst to the revelers, a quiet disaster was about to unfold. Michael Thompson, a young and enthusiastic entrepreneur, was leaning over the railing, captivated by the sea's allure. In a twist of fate, he lost his balance and fell overboard, plunging into the dark waters below. The yacht, filled with the sounds of festivity, took a moment to register the gravity of the situation. Panic ensued as the guests realized what had happened. Emily's heart raced with dread. She knew the dangers that lurked beneath the waves of Emerald Bay, especially after sunset. Understanding the severity of the incident, Richard immediately ordered the yacht to halt and initiated a rescue operation. However, amidst the chaos, their distress signal to the Coast Guard was lost, leaving them isolated in the vast ocean. With her expertise in marine life, Emily stepped forward to lead the rescue. Time was critical. Sharks are drawn to the thrashing and noise of a struggling swimmer. She coordinated with the crew to deploy a smaller boat for the rescue, readying herself to dive in and assist. A sense of dread enveloped them as they neared Michael's last known location. The faint silhouette of a shark circling nearby became visible, attracted by the commotion. Emily's heart sank further. The predator was dangerously close. In the rescue boat, armed with only a flashlight and extensive knowledge, Emily leaned over the edge, scanning the waters for Michael and the approaching shark. Every second was precious, and the looming threat of the shark attack intensified the urgency of their mission. With Emily at the helm, the rescue boat closed in on the spot where Michael had last been seen. The water, black under the night sky, offered little visibility. Emily's flashlight swept over the waves, searching. Then, one of the crew members shouted that they had spotted Michael struggling weakly a few meters away. As they drew nearer, the ominous shadow of the shark became more apparent, circling closer with each passing moment. Emily knew they had mere moments before it would strike. Her mind raced with the knowledge she had accumulated over years of studying these apex predators. She had to act fast. Emily dove into the water in a split-second decision, 
creating a distraction. She planned to draw the shark's attention away from Michael. It was a dangerous move, but it was their only chance. The shark, curious about this new arrival, veered towards Emily. Her heart pounded as she swam vigorously, leading the predator away from Michael. Meanwhile, the crew reached Michael, pulling his exhausted form into the boat. His leg bore deep gashes from the shark's initial attack, blood coloring the water around him. The crew's immediate concern was to stop the bleeding and stabilize him. They applied pressure to the wounds with makeshift bandages, trying to control the blood loss while radioing the yacht for medical assistance. Richard and the other guests had prepared the first aid kit on the yacht and readied themselves for Michael's return. The atmosphere was tense, a stark contrast to the earlier mirth. Richard and a few guests helped hoist Michael on board as the rescue boat approached. The yacht's crew, some with basic medical training, quickly administered first aid. They cleaned the wounds with antiseptic, applied more secure bandages, and administered pain relief. Meanwhile, Richard contacted the Coast Guard and dispatched a rescue helicopter. Michael, though in pain and shock, was conscious. He thanked his rescuers, particularly Emily, who had risked her life to save his. Emily, now back on the yacht, was visibly shaken but composed. Her quick thinking and bravery had averted a greater tragedy. As the helicopter arrived, the winch lowered to airlift Michael to the nearest hospital. The guests on the yacht watched in solemn silence as he was carried away, the seriousness of the situation weighing heavily on their minds. Michael's recovery became a story of resilience and courage in the following weeks. His injuries, though severe, were not life-threatening, and he made a steady recovery. The experience had left its mark, not just physically, but also mentally. He often spoke of the incident, reflecting on the fragility of life and the unexpected heroes like Emily, who emerge in times of crisis. Emily, meanwhile, gained renewed respect among her peers and the public. Her actions that night were a testament to her expertise and bravery. The incident also highlighted the need for better safety measures in recreational water activities and a deeper understanding of the marine environment. The story of that fateful night on the Sea Odyssey became a reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the extraordinary courage of ordinary people. It was a tale that would be recounted for years in Emerald Bay, a testament to survival and the human spirit. Bathed in the beautiful glow of the sun setting off the shores of Athol Island in the Bahamas, a narrative of intrigue and suspense unfolded, weaving the tale of Cameron Robbins, an 18-year-old Louisiana baseball star whose high school graduation celebration took a harrowing turn aboard the Blackbeard's Revenge Sunset cruise ship. The air pulsated with jubilation and youthful exuberance as Robbins, fueled by a dare, made a daring leap into the cool embrace of the ocean. The splash echoed against the ship's hull, marking the commencement of a story that would soon transcend the realms of festivity and adventure. Yet the scene took a chilling turn as the photographic evidence captured a shadowy figure beneath the surface, juxtaposed against the silhouette of the brave jumper. The whispers of speculation reverberated through the community suggesting a twist in the narrative. Was Robbins, in his fearless leap, actually eluding a potential threat from the depths? The rumor of a lurking shark camouflaged within the sapphire waters added an eerie layer to the already mysterious incident. As the days passed, the search for the missing teen intensified, blending into a tapestry of suspense and unanswered questions. The decision to call off the search after two days cast a somber shadow over the community, leaving them grappling with an unresolved story. The waters surrounding Athol Island, now holding the untold secrets of Cameron Robbins, became a canvas upon which speculation painted an enigmatic portrait. The emotions of the celebratory occasion were overshadowed by the uncertainty that clung to Robbins' disappearance. Was he a victim of a spontaneous dare gone awry, or did he knowingly plunge into the depths, navigating the maritime unknown to escape an unforeseen peril? The narrative unfolded like an intricately woven mystery, captivating the minds of those touched by the tale. Once a picturesque backdrop for joyous celebrations, Athol Island now bore witness to a story that transcended the realms of tragedy and adventure. The incident on Cameron Robbins lingered, suspended in the community's collective consciousness, waiting for the currents of truth to reveal the submerged chapters of a story that refused to find its conclusion in the quiet waters off the Bahamas. The unanswered questions lingered like shadows casting a haunting spell over the events that unfolded in that fateful twilight. 
leaving an indelible mark on the shores of Athol Island. As the saga aboard the Blackbeard's Revenge unfolded in the waning light of the Bahamian sunset, the storyline became a gripping tableau of unforeseen danger. The pivotal moment, immortalized in chilling footage, captured Cameron Robbins, the 18-year-old Louisiana baseball star, taking a plunge into the vast depths, marking the culmination of his high school graduation celebration. The video, an accidental chronicle of tragedy, showcased Robbins swimming amidst the inky waters, his joyous rite of passage overshadowed by an unfolding crisis. The urgency of the situation manifested with the throne life preserver, a buoyant beacon of hope tossed into the abyss, tantalizingly close to the desperate teenager. Yet Robbins, seemingly entranced by an unseen force below, defied the instinct for self-preservation and embarked on a determined swim away from the offered lifeline. The urgent calls of his classmates imploring him to grab the life preserver were overshadowed by his eerie fixation on a shadowy shape emerging from the depths, casting a somber mood over the entire scene. As the footage spread online, it transformed into a virtual amphitheater of speculation, with viewers worldwide dissecting every frame in search of elusive answers. The prevailing theory, fueled by the collective imaginations of online sleuths, suggested that Robbins had encountered a shark during his ill-fated leap. Claims of unmistakable shark sightings within the video fueled the wildfire of conjecture, prompting a digital sleuthing frenzy that sought to uncover the truth behind the ominous shadow lurking in the waters. Providing a problematic update the previous day, Royal Bahamas Defense Force, RBDF, Commodore Raymond King, confirmed the sinister reality of the locale where Robbins went overboard, describing it as really shark-infested. The convergence of video evidence, eyewitness accounts, and official acknowledgement painted a disquieting tableau that left the audience teetering on the precipice of an unsettling revelation. Once a backdrop for celebration, the waters off Athol Island now held the echoes of a wondrous plunge, each ripple resonating with the weight of unanswered questions and the looming specter of danger. As the haunting video circulated on social media platforms, the virtual landscape became a breeding ground for conjecture and chilling accounts. A singular voice cut through the digital noise, asserting with conviction that the video didn't lie. He was attacked by a shark and taken under. The ominous narrative gained momentum as others joined the discourse, their observations forming an eerie chorus of corroborative details. You can see the shark to the left of the video, remarked one observer, while another, adamant in their assertion, claimed to have discerned the telltale fin in the fleeting frames of the short video. The online realm transformed into a virtual investigation room, dissecting the footage frame by frame attempting to unravel the cryptic enigma shrouding Cameron Robbins' plunge into the abyss. The backdrop of this harrowing incident unfolded against the backdrop of the Bahamas, a region renowned for its picturesque landscapes, but harboring a darker reality beneath the pristine waters. The Bahamas, home to highly aggressive sharks, including the notorious tiger and bull sharks, set the stage for an incident that blurred the lines between daredevilry and the perils of its untamed marine ecosystem. Witnesses, their voices rising above the digital din, claimed that Robbins, in a moment of youthful bravado, succumbed to a dare, leaping overboard at the ominous hour of 11.30 p.m. from the Blackbeard's Revenge Sunset cruise ship. The incident now transcended the boundaries of a mere dare. It became an exploration of the fragile dance between human audacity and the predatory instincts that lurked beneath the surface of the seemingly tranquil Bahamian waters. In the days leading up to the mysterious plunge off the Blackbeard's Revenge, Cameron Robbins, a recent graduate of University High in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, reveled in the jubilation of academic accomplishment. His radiant smile adorned an Instagram photo, capturing the essence of a triumphant moment, dressed in the symbolic regalia of his graduation robe. The celebratory atmosphere extended beyond the confines of University High, as Robbins joined scores of other seniors from various Baton Rouge high schools, including Episcopal, Catholic, and St. Joseph's Academy, in an island soiree that would take a dangerous turn. Having only recently touched down on Bahamian soil, the students found themselves thrust into an adventure, a pirate-themed sunset boat excursion off Athol Island. As Robbins took the daring leap into the unknown, the festive ambiance of the pirate-themed cruise transformed into a sad search-and-rescue mission. The boat, once filled with laughter and camaraderie, now became a vessel fraught with anxiety and uncertainty. 
The crew members, accompanied by multiple agencies, including the vigilant presence of the U.S. Coast Guard, embarked on a desperate quest to locate the vanished athlete. The transition from revelry to rescue cast a haunting pall over the sun-soaked waters, leaving the fate of Cameron Robbins suspended in a narrative that unfolded with every passing moment, teetering between celebration and the shadows of the unknown. In the aftermath of the halted search, Commodore Raymond King provided a sobering update, highlighting the stark challenges facing Cameron Robbins' disappearance. Acknowledging the slim chances of survival, particularly without a life vest, and potentially impaired by intoxication, King added a disheartening layer by revealing the shark-infested nature of the area where Robbins took his fateful plunge. Despite the grim circumstances, King urged Robbins' family to maintain hope in the face of uncertainty. The joint efforts of the U.S. Coast Guard District 7 and the Royal Bahamas Defense Force covered a sprawling 325-square-mile search area, with the Coast Guard expressing condolences as the search concluded. The Robbins' family, amidst profound grief, expressed gratitude for the extensive support from the Bahamas government, the U.S. Coast Guard, the United Cajun Navy, and Congressman Garrett Graves. Following the Bahamas government's official conclusion of the rescue mission, the Robbins family prepared to return to Baton Rouge, acknowledging the heartfelt support from various entities. University Lab School Director Kevin George reflected on Robbins' 13-year educational journey, emphasizing the need for unity in the grieving school community. Robbins' social media portrayed his love for baseball and his close-knit relationships. His baseball coach, Justin Morgan, provided a touching tribute, depicting Robbins as a cherished figure on and off the field. The UHI community grappling with the profound impact of the tragedy, clung to hope while collectively navigating the uncharted waters of grief. Thoughts and prayers were extended to the Robbins family during this unimaginably difficult time. The waters off Athol Island, once a site of celebration, now bore witness to an unfolding tragedy that left the Robbins family and the Yuhai community grappling with profound grief. The haunting uncertainty surrounding Robbins' plunge into the shark-infested depths served as a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between youthful exuberance and the unpredictable forces of nature. And echoes of this poignant chapter linger, urging reflection on the fragility of life and the resilience required to navigate uncharted waters. In the serene coastal town of Willow Bay in the summer of 2003, the locals whispered tales of the deep waters beyond the bay, a place rumored to be a shark haven. The protagonist of our tale, 37-year-old surfer Daniel Thompson, had always been intrigued by the ocean's mysteries. A man of courage and adventure, Daniel decided to venture into the infamous waters, challenging the fears of the townsfolk and perhaps his own. Daniel was a seasoned surfer with golden hair sun-bleached from years of riding waves. His physique bore the testament of a life spent battling the ocean's forces, a true warrior of the waves. On this fateful day, the sky was a clear azure, mirroring the deep blue sea that beckoned him. He paddled further, the shore becoming a distant memory as he ventured into the uncharted waters, his heart pounding with fear and exhilaration. As he maneuvered through the waves, the unexpected happened. A shadow lurked beneath the crystal-clear waters, a formidable predator in its domain, a shark. The town's tales were not just stories, but warnings grounded in reality. The shark circled, its fin cutting through the water's surface, creating a terrifying yet mesmerizing pattern. Daniel's heart raced, adrenaline pumping through his veins as he tried to maintain a steady breath, his experienced eyes scanning for an escape route. In a heartbeat, chaos erupted. The shark lunged, its jaws snapping dangerously close to Daniel's leg. Panic surged as he paddled fiercely, employing every ounce of his strength and surfing skill to evade the predator. The chase was a terrifying dance between man and beast, a test of wills in the heart of the ocean. When all hope seemed lost, a figure appeared from the depths, a fellow surfer named Emily Rodriguez. A local legend in Willow Bay, Emily was known for her bravery and unmatched skills on the waves. With a heart as vast as the ocean, she darted towards Daniel, her board slicing through the water with precision and speed. In a heroic display of teamwork and courage, Emily managed to distract the shark, leading it away from Daniel. The moments felt like hours as Daniel paddled towards safety, his body shaking and his mind swirling with fear and gratitude. Emily returned, her face a canvas of determination and relief as she reached Daniel, pulling him onto her board. Together they rode the waves back to the shore, 
a symphony of breaths heavy with the weight of survival echoing in harmony with the ocean's roar. The community gathered, their faces a mixture of awe and concern as they welcomed the brave surfers back to solid ground. Daniel bore scratches and bruises, a testimony to the harrowing encounter in the shark-infested waters. But he was alive, saved by the bravery of a fellow surfer, a woman who dared to face the feared predator of the deep. As he lay on the sandy beach, the pain was overshadowed by a profound sense of gratitude and the birth of a deep bond forged in the crucible of danger. In the days that followed, Daniel healed, his body and spirit mending through the care of the community and the unwavering support of Emily. The tale of their encounter became a legend in Willow Bay, a story of courage, survival, and the unyielding human spirit that dared to challenge the fearsome forces of nature. In the weeks that followed the harrowing encounter, the town of Willow Bay buzzed with whispers and exclamations, recounting the tale of the brave surfers who faced the fearsome predator of the deep and lived to tell the tale. The community rallied around Daniel and Emily, their story becoming a beacon of courage and unity, a testament to the human spirit's resilience. Daniel Thompson, the man who dared to venture into the unknown, was grappling with the memories of that fateful day. Once a source of joy and freedom, the ocean now bore the scars of fear and danger. Yet amidst the turmoil, a deep bond blossomed between him and his savior, Emily Rodriguez. Their shared experience forged a connection stronger than the mightiest waves, a friendship rooted in bravery and mutual respect. As Daniel's physical wounds healed, the duo spent hours recounting their adventures on the waves, sharing laughter and dreams, their spirits dancing in harmony with the rhythmic song of the sea. With her fearless heart and wise soul, Emily guided Daniel, helping him navigate the stormy seas of trauma and steering him toward healing and acceptance. The summer sun continued to grace the coastal town, its golden rays weaving tales of hope and renewal. The community of Willow Bay embarked on a journey of education and awareness led by the brave surfers. Together, they initiated programs to better understand the majestic creatures of the deep, transforming fear into knowledge and ignorance into understanding. As the day approached to commemorate their survival, a ceremony was organized at the heart of the town, a celebration of courage and resilience. The community gathered, their faces glowing with pride and admiration, their hearts united in spirit, pulsating with anticipation and pride. Daniel stood before them, a living testament to the spirit of survival, his eyes reflecting a depth of understanding, a maturity born from facing the fearsome forces of nature. Emily was by his side, her presence a pillar of strength, a beacon of bravery. Together they shared their tale of courage, quick thinking, and the deep bond forged in the crucible of danger. As they spoke, the community listened with bated breath, their eyes welling with tears of pride and empathy, their hearts swelling with admiration and respect for the brave souls who had faced the ocean's might and returned to tell the tale. The ceremony concluded with a standing ovation, a symphony of applause reverberating through the air, a celebration of life, courage, and the unyielding spirit of survival. Daniel and Emily stood together, their hands raised in victory, their faces radiant with smiles that bore the light of a thousand suns, embodying courage, friendship, and the unyielding spirit of survival. In the heart of Willow Bay, a legend was born, a tale of two brave souls who ventured into the shark-infested waters and returned with a story of survival, friendship, and the beautiful dance of life. A dance of fear faced, challenges met, and a deep bond forged in the crucible of danger. A testimony to the human spirit's indomitable force. The immense coral reef's seemingly limitless width sparkled in a golden glow as the sun dipped low over the ocean's surface. A brave American surfer, Alex Brad, had traveled to Australia for the ideal wave. He had traveled to this far-flung planet region, where the waves were famed for their beauty and strength and the sporadic appearance of sharks. The waves were spectacular on this day, and Alex seemed at ease. He could feel the exhilaration of the ocean pulsing through him with each stroke. Under him, the transparent water revealed a fascinating world of alive coral and aquatic life. Although he knew the dangers of surfing in these shark-infested seas, the barrier reef's attraction was too much to ignore. 
His heart leaped with excitement as he surfed the peak of that enormous wave, experiencing a joy that only surfers could fully grasp. He had no idea that his life was precariously close to a terrifying cliff. A massive shadow that swallowed the dazzling sunshine appeared beneath him in a split second. Before his frantic mind could respond, a giant white shark of enormous shape burst from the water, its opening mouth inches from his dangling legs. In that breathtaking instant, time seemed to go on forever. As the surfer met the elemental power of nature, his adrenaline-fueled elation turned to utter horror. His heart beat like a drum of survival in his chest. It was a profound meeting with the apex predator that served as a reminder that anything may happen in the great ocean, even the most exhilarating adventures. Alex kicked his board towards the beast out of instinct rather than thinking, narrowly avoiding its deadly fangs. The impact knocked him into the water, but he quickly climbed back onto his board. Although the predator had given him a tenuous reprieve, it continued to circle him, its icy black eyes fixed on him as possible food. Alex realized he had to move quickly. He looked around him with shaking hands. Long shadows were cast over the ocean as the sun crept closer to the horizon. He needed to take charge of his survival because he couldn't rely solely on rescue. His sole tool and lifeline, he realized as he turned to look at his surfboard. Gnashing his teeth, Alex took the leash off the surfboard and started paddling hard in the opposite direction of the ominous shark. Each stroke caused his heart to accelerate and his muscles to burn from the effort. The seconds turned into minutes, but the shark kept following him, never veering off. Exhaustion began to chop at Alex's determination as the afternoon sun turned into a moonlit sky. He realized that he couldn't keep paddling continuously. His resolve was strengthened by desperation, and he came up with a strategy. He made a temporary shelter as a barrier between himself and the approaching predator by fastening a leash cord to the board's nose. He reached into his backpack and pulled out a tiny waterproof flashlight with a shaking hand. Once he turned it on, a weak beam was cast into the deep ocean. The shark's silhouette was still oddly close, a terrifying reminder of the danger lurking below. Hour after hour went by during this tense standoff. The pain in Alex's body and his state of fatigue in his thoughts were both palpable. He had to use all his effort to maintain his composure as he battled terror and panic. He muttered encouraging words to himself, vowing not to become another victim of the ocean's relentless hold. Someone captured his signal of the beam light from the shore. The coastal rescuers rushed to his location as soon as they realized his dreadful situation. A group of skilled maritime professionals was rescuing him. They raced against the clock and the persistent predator because they knew they were running out of time. Back on the water, Alex could see that his flashlight's batteries were running low. As night fell, panic threatened to engulf him. He strained his ears to hear any sounds of the coming rescue squad as he listened closely. Just when hope seemed lost, he heard the distant hum of an engine. As the rescue boat came into view, its strong searchlights piercing through the night, a wave of relief washed over him. Alex's weak glow was visible in the distance and the rescue team hurried toward it. The shark made one more frightening pass before slipping into the depths as it sensed impending danger. Alex was dragged aboard by the crew, his body quivering from tiredness and his face turning pale. He had made it through the horrific experience, and the hours-long pressure of fear gradually dissipated. He knew he owed his life to their prompt arrival, the comfort of the boat's cabin, and their soothing remarks. Alex found himself thinking about the terrifying ordeal as they returned to land. He witnessed the vast coral reef's unyielding violence and fantastic beauty. He had gazed into the abyss, confronted his worst fears, and come out on top. But the experience with the unrelenting great white shark had changed him irrevocably. In the end, Alex's trip to the vast coral reef taught him about the strength of the human spirit and the power of nature. The experience left him with a newfound respect for the ocean's mysteries and a deeper understanding of the delicate balance between man and nature in the vast, amazing world under the waves. He had surfed the most dangerous waters, survived the most terrifying encounter, and overcame the ordeal with these lessons. In the heart of the South Pacific lies a remote island, a hidden gem untouched by the hustle of modern life. This isolation drew Alex Turner in, a lone traveler searching for peace and adventure. 
With its pristine beaches and lush forests, the island promised an escape, a chance to reconnect with nature away from the world's noise. Alex arrived with a sense of anticipation, his supplies carefully packed for what was supposed to be a month-long stay. The first days were everything he had hoped for. The island's natural beauty was overwhelming, with vibrant coral reefs, clear blue waters, and dense tropical forests that seemed to whisper ancient secrets. Alex felt a profound sense of serenity as he settled into his campsite, located on a high overlook with a breathtaking ocean view. Each morning he woke to waves and the gentle rustle of palm leaves. He spent his days exploring the island's hidden corners, marveling at the diversity of life and the sheer beauty of his surroundings. However, Alex's initial euphoria waned as the days turned into weeks. The reality of living in such isolation started to set in. Although he had come prepared, his supplies began to dwindle faster than anticipated. Freshwater was scarce, and while the island offered abundant natural resources, sustaining life itself became increasingly demanding. Moreover, Alex discovered signs that he was not alone in facing survival challenges. Remnants of previous campsites hinted at other adventurers who had come seeking solace or thrills, only to leave in haste. These signs, unsettling as they were, did not deter Alex. Instead, they ignited a determination to overcome the hardships and prove to himself that he could endure. But the island held a secret that Alex had not foreseen. One day, while scouting the beach for a potential fishing spot, he encountered a school of bull sharks patrolling the shallow waters. Their sleek forms moved with a grace that belied their reputation for aggression. Alex watched, fascinated yet unnerved as they cut through the waves, masters of their domain. The realization hit him then, leaving the island would not be as straightforward as he had imagined. The waters around the island, teeming with these formidable predators, posed a significant risk. Alex had always respected the ocean and its inhabitants, understanding the delicate balance between man and nature. However, the presence of the bull sharks meant that any attempt to leave by water would be fraught with danger. As his supplies continued to diminish, the urgency to devise a plan for departure grew. Alex spent his nights poring over maps and studying the sharks' behavior, trying to find a way to navigate through their territory safely. The challenge was daunting, but Alex was not one to give up easily. His days became a cycle of preparation and observation. He reinforced his campsite, conserved his resources, and kept a vigilant watch over the sea. The island, once a paradise, had become a beautiful prison. Alex knew that to leave he would need to outwit the creatures that had become his constant, lurking companions. The solitude he had once sought now weighed heavily on him. The vastness of the ocean, a barrier between him and the outside world, felt more oppressive with each passing day. Yet Alex's resolve continued. He understood that survival was not just about enduring, but adapting. And to adapt, he would need to face the dangers of the sea head-on, armed with knowledge and a newfound respect for the wild that surrounded him. As he stood on the beach, watching the sunset paint the sky in shades of fire, Alex felt a quiet determination settle within him. He would leave the island, not as a man defeated by fear, but as one who had learned the true meaning of courage and resilience. The journey ahead would be difficult, but Alex was ready to face whatever the ocean had in store. The following morning, with the first light of dawn casting a soft glow over the island, Alex set his plan into motion. He had crafted a rudimentary spear from a sturdy branch sharpened at one end. This spear, though simple, was a symbol of his willingness to confront the dangers that lay ahead. Alex knew the bull sharks were most active during the early hours, hunting in the shallows. He had observed their patterns and identified a narrow window of time when their presence near his intended departure point seemed to lessen. It was a gamble, but his best chance at making it past the predators and into the open sea. Before leaving, Alex looked back at the island that had been his home for weeks. What had started as an escape from the world had turned into a profound journey of self-discovery. With its unyielding beauty and hidden dangers, the island had taught him lessons he would carry for the rest of his life. With a deep breath, Alex stepped into the water, spear in hand, and began to paddle slowly and steadily away from the shore. His eyes scanned the clear blue waters, alert for any movement. The sun climbed higher, its rays piercing the water and illuminating the world below. Alex could see the coral reefs teeming with life, a vibrant ecosystem oblivious to the above human drama. 
As he moved further from the island, the depth of the water increased, and the ocean floor dropped away into darkness. Alex's heart raced as he entered the bull shark's domain but forced himself to remain calm and blend with the sea's rhythm. Minutes stretched into what felt like hours as Alex paddled, each stroke taking him further from the island and closer to safety. And then, when the tension seemed almost unbearable, the silhouette of a passing boat appeared on the horizon. Alex waved his spear, making as much noise as possible, desperate to catch the crew's attention. The boat turned towards him, its engine growing louder as it approached. Relief flooded through Alex as he realized he was no longer alone. The crew aboard the boat had spotted him, and they were coming to his aid. As Alex was pulled aboard, he looked back at the island one last time. The challenges he had faced there had pushed him to his limits, but they had also revealed a strength he never knew he possessed. The island had been both his captor and his teacher, and he was leaving it behind with a sense of gratitude. Back on the boat as he shared his story with the crew, Alex realized that his adventure had changed him. He had sought solitude but found a deeper connection with the world around him. He had faced his fears and emerged more vigorous, more resilient. The island, with its bull sharks and hidden dangers, would always be a part of his story, a reminder of the journey that had taught him the true meaning of courage, survival, and the unbreakable will of the human spirit. In 1998, in the coastal town of Oceanville, situated on the eastern shore of the United States, a spirited young woman from Portugal named Sara Mendes was on holiday. At 24, Sarah had already made her mark as a talented engineer in Lisbon. Seeking respite from her demanding job, she was drawn to the allure of the American coast and the beckoning waves of the Atlantic. Oceanville, with its golden sandy beaches and the vast expanse of the Atlantic, was a far cry from the bustling streets of Lisbon. The waves crashing against the shore whispered promises of adventure and escape to Sarah, igniting a spark within her. Sarah's enthusiasm for the ocean was infectious, tall and lean, with sun-kissed hair and a spirit hungry for exploration. Accompanying her were her closest friends, Martim, the avid surfer with a perpetual sun-kissed tan and a heart as vast as the ocean, Ines, the fearless free spirit whose laughter could brighten even the gloomiest days, and Miguel, the tech-savvy traveler always armed with his camera, capturing moments that danced in the depths. They were more than friends. They were kindred spirits united by their love for the sea and desire to experience the world. The incident that would forever mark their lives occurred during the summer of 1998. It was a typical July day, the sun blazing in a cloudless sky and the beach alive with laughter and the promise of adventure. Families and friends flocked to the shoreline seeking refuge from the summer heat in the calm, inviting waters of the Atlantic. Excited for another underwater expedition, Sarah and her crew gathered at the dock. The boat bobbed gently, an eager steed ready to carry them to their aquatic playground. Hearts filled with the anticipation of discovery, they boarded, ready to dive into the depths and explore the secrets hidden below. Unbeknownst to them, fate had woven a different narrative for that day. The seemingly calm and serene sea held within its depths an ancient force, the ocean's apex predator, a creature of awe and fear, the great white shark. In those blissful moments before tragedy unfurled, the stage was set, and the characters, unaware of the peril that awaited them, embarked on their ill-fated voyage into the ocean's domain. The boat anchored, and the friends, their excitement barely contained, geared up for the dive. Sarah adjusted her mask, feeling a surge of adrenaline as she glanced at the vast expanse of the Atlantic before her. Martim gave a thumbs up, signaling they were ready to plunge into the azure depths. As they descended, the underwater world unfolded in all its vibrant glory. The play of light through the water, the darting fish, and the gentle sway of the kelp fascinated them. They marveled at the intricate dance of marine life, their minds momentarily freed from the stresses of daily life. But fate had a different plan. Suddenly a shadow loomed, darkening the ocean floor. A hulking figure emerged from the depths, the great white shark, a formidable predator. Panic coursed through the group as the enormity of the situation dawned upon them. In a heart-stopping moment, the shark lunged, its jagged teeth finding purchase in Sarah's leg. The water turned crimson as her friends shouted in terror, grappling with the reality of the attack. Inez, ever brave, 
tried to fend off the predator, landing desperate blows to rescue her friend. Miguel swiftly used his camera to create distractions, hoping the shark would be deterred by the flashes. Meanwhile, Martin fought to keep Sarah afloat, staunching the bleeding as best as he could. Sarah, though in agonizing pain, displayed remarkable courage, her determination to survive unwavering. Minutes felt like hours as they grappled with the perilous situation. The shark circled, relentless in its pursuit. In a daring move, Miguel hit the shark on its snout with the camera, startling it momentarily. Seizing this opportunity, they made a break for the surface, their kicks powerful and synchronized. Gasping for air, they breached the surface, their faces a mask of horror and relief. The battle with the ocean's apex predator had left them scarred, physically and emotionally. Sarah, her pain evident but her spirit unbroken, was rushed back to the shore where the gravity of her injuries became brutally clear. The attack had taken its toll on Sarah. Her injuries were grave, and despite the valiant efforts to save her, she succumbed to the trauma. The incident would forever haunt her friends. Their lives changed in an instant by the cruel hand of fate. As the boat raced back to the shore, its engine roaring like a beacon of hope, Martim, Inez, and Miguel struggled to stabilize Sarah, whose life hung in the balance. Blood stained the deck, stark evidence of the brutality of the attack. The wail of sirens pierced the air as the ambulance sped through the streets of Oceanville, racing towards Mercy General Hospital, where Sarah's fate would be decided. The hospital, a place of healing and hope, transformed into a battlefield where skilled medical professionals waged a relentless war to save Sarah's life. The urgency in the air was palpable as they rushed her into the operating room. The gravity of her injuries became painfully clear as they assessed the extent of the damage. Her leg bore deep, jagged wounds and her arm was a mangled, barely recognizable limb. In the dimly lit operating room, the medical team worked with unwavering focus, their hands moving deftly as they fought to stem the bleeding and stabilize her condition. The surgery was a grueling affair, lasting hours, as they made the heart-wrenching decision to amputate her arm, a painful sacrifice to ensure her survival. Sarah's friends, Martim, Inez, and Miguel, stood vigil outside the operating room, their faces etched with worry and fear. The minutes dragged on, each one feeling like an eternity until finally, a weary but resolute surgeon emerged to deliver the news. Sarah had made it through the surgery, but the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges. The news of Sarah losing her arm was a devastating blow to her friends and family. Martim, Inez, and Miguel struggled to come to terms with the cruel reality of the situation. Grappling with feelings of guilt and helplessness, Sarah's family, who had flown across the ocean from Portugal, stood by her side, their hearts heavy with dread. The sight of their daughter and sister, now forever changed, brought tears to their eyes. Yet amidst the grief they clung to hope, praying for Sarah's strength to carry her through the arduous journey of recovery. In the days that followed, Sarah embarked on a grueling path of rehabilitation. The physical pain was excruciating, but her determination was unwavering. Her hospital room became a hub of activity, filled with therapists and specialists working tirelessly to help her regain her strength and independence. But it wasn't just physical wounds that Sarah had to contend with. The emotional scars ran deep. Her friends, who had witnessed the horror of that fateful dive, grappled with survivor's guilt, questioning what they could have done differently. After months, Sarah Mendez emerged from the shadows, a symbol of unwavering determination and the power of the human spirit. The loss of her arm was a painful chapter, but it was not the end of her story. She chose to redefine her life, inspiring countless others with her courage and proving that even in the face of the most harrowing trials, the human spirit could rise undefeated. In the heart of summer 2018, New Smyrna Beach in Florida, a hotspot for surfers and sun seekers, set the stage for an unforgettable adventure for a group of high school friends. Known for its warm waters and vibrant beach culture, New Smyrna was also notorious for its shark sightings, which often thrilled the more daring visitors. The story revolves around five teenagers, Alex Johnson, a confident and natural leader, Sarah Miller, the group's free spirit, Ethan Wright, the cautious and thoughtful one, Mia Thompson, 
adventurous and fearless, and Kyle Anderson, the prankster of the group. They had planned a weekend of beach camping to celebrate their high school graduation, eager to make memories before heading off to college. Their campsite was a small clearing near the beach, hidden from the usual tourist spots. It was the perfect place for them to relax, share stories, and enjoy the starry nights. As the sun set on their first day, the beach transformed into a beautiful canvas of oranges and purples, and the friends gathered around the campfire. The night was warm, the sound of waves soothing, but relaxation soon turned to excitement for these friends. Kyle, ever the instigator, dared the group to go for a midnight swim. Despite Ethan's protests, reminding them of the beach's reputation for sharks, the excitement of the dare was too tempting. After some hesitation, they all agreed, laughing off Ethan's concerns. They ventured into the water, the moon casting a silvery glow. The thrill of the night swim was exhilarating. They splashed and shouted, their laughter echoing along the shoreline. But their joy was short-lived. Suddenly, Mia felt something brush against her leg. At first, she dismissed it as seaweed, but a second, more forceful nudge sent a wave of panic through her. She screamed, alerting the others. Within moments, the group was in a frenzy, scrambling towards the shore. From the beach, Ethan, who had stayed back, saw the commotion and ran towards the water, his heart pounding. As he reached the water's edge, he could make out a dark shape moving swiftly through the water, a shark drawn by the noise and splashing. Alex and Sarah reached safety first, closest to the shore, followed by Kyle, who was panting heavily. Mia, however, was farther out, struggling to keep up. A mere shadow in the moonlit water, the shark circled closer to her. Mia's strokes became frantic as she tried to escape the looming shadow beneath her. The others, now safely on the beach, shouted for her to hurry. Without a second thought, Ethan grabbed a nearby life buoy and plunged into the water, driven by fear and determination. The shark, a sleek and powerful predator, was closing in on Mia. Her energy was waning, her kicks slower as panic set in. As the shark neared, Ethan reached her, thrusting the life buoy towards her. She grabbed it with a desperate strength she didn't know she had. Ethan's presence in the water diverted the shark's attention. It circled them, its dark fin cutting through the water like a blade. Mia and Ethan, clinging to the life buoy, slowly moved back towards the shore trying not to splash too much to avoid attracting the shark further. Alex, Sarah, and Kyle watched helplessly on the beach, their hearts in their throats. The shark made a sudden, swift move toward Ethan and Mia, its jaws open. In that heart-stopping moment, Ethan pushed Mia away, making himself the closer target. But just as quickly, the shark veered away, disappearing into the depths. The reason for its retreat was soon apparent. The disturbance had attracted the attention of a nearby patrol. A Coast Guard boat, lights flashing, was speeding towards them. Sensing the larger presence, the shark had decided to abandon its pursuit. Exhausted and shaken, Mia and Ethan finally returned to the beach. Their friends rushed to them. Relief and fear mingled in their tearful embraces. The Coast Guard arrived, provided first aid, and checked them for injuries. Miraculously, aside from some cuts and bruises, they were unharmed. The teenagers sat wrapped in blankets, sipping warm drinks provided by the Coast Guard. The officer in charge gave them a stern but relieved lecture on night swimming and the dangers of sharks, especially in a known hotspot like New Smyrna Beach. The incident became a pivotal moment for the group. The rest of the weekend was spent much more quietly, with reflections on the close call they had experienced. The reality of their mortality and the unpredictability of nature had sunk in. Their conversations drifted to plans, dreams, and the promise to always look out for one another, no matter where life took them. Years later, they would often recount the story of their graduation beach camping trip. It started as an adventurous getaway, but became a life lesson they would never forget. They spoke of Ethan's bravery, the terror of the shark's shadow in the moonlight, and their newfound respect for the ocean's power. The story of their night at New Smyrna Beach reminded them of the fine line between adventure and recklessness and the unbreakable bond that their shared experience had forged among them. In the quaint coastal village of Marlin Bay, in an undisclosed region, the year was 2003. The locals often shared whispered tales of the shark-infested waters that bordered their home. The setting was a secluded beach, where the golden sands bore witness to many enchanting and terrifying stories. 
At the center of our tale was 37-year-old surfer Anthony Tony Wallace. Tony was no stranger to the sea, having spent most of his life riding the waves that crashed against the shores of Marlin Bay. His companion on many of these adventures was his childhood friend, Lisa Martinez. Lisa was a beacon of wisdom and caution, often advising Tony against venturing too far into the dangerous waters. On this fateful day, the sky wore a blanket of ominous clouds, starkly contrasting with the usually clear azure sky. Despite Lisa's reservations, Tony couldn't resist the call of the sea, a siren song pulling him towards the waves that seemed more ferocious, more alive than ever before. As Tony paddled deeper, Lisa watched from the shore, her heart caught in her throat. The sea was a turmoil of waves, each higher and more fierce than the last. With years of experience, Tony maneuvered skillfully, his body moving harmoniously with the ocean. Suddenly, a large fin sliced through the water, rushing towards Tony. Panic erupted on the shore as people pointed and shouted, trying to warn him. Lisa felt her heart freeze as she witnessed her friend approaching the oncoming danger. In a heart-stopping moment, the shark attacked, its jaws snapping dangerously close to Tony. With adrenaline fueling his movements, Tony managed to evade the shark, using his surfboard to create a barrier between him and the predator. It was a terrifying dance of death, a battle of wills in the churning waters. After what felt like an eternity, Tony seized a momentary lapse in the shark's attack to make a desperate dash towards the shore. His body was a canvas of cuts and bruises, a testimony to the fierce battle he had just endured. Breathing heavily and paddling with all his strength, Tony finally reached the shore where Lisa and a group of locals were ready to assist him. His leg bore a deep gash, a grim souvenir from the shark's razor-sharp teeth. As they tended to his wounds, the relief in the atmosphere was palpable. Tony had survived, bearing the harrowing encounter's physical and mental scars. His spirit remained unbroken, a testament to the human will to survive against all odds. In the days that followed, the small community of Marlin Bay rallied around Tony, their local hero who had faced the Beast of the Deep and lived to tell the tale. The local media caught wind of the story and soon reporters were flocking to the village, eager to get the first-hand account of the man who had stared death in the face and emerged victorious. With Lisa by his side, Tony recounted the terrifying ordeal to the world. His leg was bandaged, the deep gash a painful reminder of the close encounter with the shark. Yet as he spoke, his voice had no bitterness or anger. Instead, there was a deep respect for the creature that had been his adversary, recognizing nature's raw power and beauty in its most primal form. As days turned into weeks, Tony embarked on a grueling recovery journey. The physical wounds healed gradually, but the mental scars ran deeper. Nightmares haunted his sleep replaying the terrifying moments of the attack repeatedly. He began visiting the beach daily, sitting on the sands that had witnessed his near-fatal encounter. He watched the same waves that had been both his playground and battleground. It was a therapeutic process, a way to reconnect with the ocean that had been a part of his life for so long. One day as the sun kissed the horizon, painting the sky with orange and pink hues, Tony decided. He would not let fear dictate his life. With a newfound determination, he began training again, pushing his body to the limits to regain his lost strength and agility. Weeks turned into months, and the day came when Tony felt ready to face the ocean once more. The community gathered on the beach, their faces a mixture of admiration and concern as they watched Tony, surfboard in hand, walking towards the roaring waves. With Lisa holding her breath on the shore, Tony paddled into the sea, his heart pounding. The ocean greeted him like an old friend, the waves embracing him as he rode them with a grace that spoke of years of experience. As he returned to the shore, the beach erupted in cheers, a community united in celebration of courage, resilience, and the indomitable human spirit. Tony Wallace, the surfer who had cheated death, was back, carving his legacy in the waves of Marlin Bay, a living legend in a village of whispered tales and deep-sea secrets. At an isolated aquatic research facility far from civilization, an ambitious team of scientists embarked on a mission to understand shark behavior. At this state-of-the-art facility surrounded by ocean, Dr. Alex Carter led this groundbreaking team with the vision of uniting humanity and these misunderstood marine creatures. 
The facility, equipped with cutting-edge technology and reinforced containment areas, enabled scientists to conduct in-depth studies of sharks at close range, studying their habits and interactions in environments designed to mimic open sea environments. A multidisciplinary team worked harmoniously, united by their passion for ocean life. However, their pursuit of knowledge was abruptly interrupted by an event no one anticipated. A containment breach caused by structural failure released a flood of sharks into the facility's corridors and research areas, creating an uncertain threat in which danger lurked around every corner. Panic ensued as the reality of their situation hit home for the team. Trapped inside with no immediate escape route, they faced an impossible challenge, outwitting predators that now deemed their facility their hunting ground. The stakes were life or death in such a dangerous situation that required quick thinking and unwavering courage to survive. Dr. Carter, steadfast in the face of fear, galvanized his team with a sense of purpose. With a firm belief in the power of their collective knowledge, he led them to apply their specialized understanding of shark behavior, which had become crucial for their survival. Together, they swiftly formulated a plan harnessing their expertise to predict the shark's movements surrounding the facility and establish secure routes for movement. Their immediate goal was to reach the emergency control room to initiate lockdown protocols to isolate sharks and restore control over security systems at the facility. Their journey proved difficult as they traversed flooded hallways while dodging areas now controlled by sharks. Armed with makeshift weapons and an understanding of shark sensory biology, the team used various tactics to distract or deter sharks as they ventured toward the facility. Each member played an essential part, from navigating its blueprints to designing chemical distractions that exploited sharks' keen sense of smell. However, despite their best efforts, the path was long and treacherous. The team had several close calls with sharks' lethal jaws but remained unscathed. Their understanding of shark behavior proved invaluable as they could predict attacks quickly enough to avoid being cornered. As they ventured deeper into the facility, their bond grew tighter as adversity came their way, and they relied on one another's strengths and knowledge for support. Dr. Carter's unyielding resolve and determination to ensure their survival drove the team forward. These survivors were determined to outwit their predators and escape without incident from this facility. Their journey was an impressive display of human resilience and scientific know-how. However, as they approached the control room, the most significant test still lay ahead. An attempt at survival with all their strength required against dangers they would encounter along the way. With their control room nearby, Dr. Alex Carter and his team moved with cautious precision through dimly lit corridors at an aquatic research facility. Every shadow in the water and every unexpected sound only added to their sense of urgency and peril as their sharks, freed from containment, prowled around with unpredictable ferocity, turning their sanctuary into an unstable hunting ground. Time was running out, not only against sharks roaming through corridors but also against diminishing oxygen supplies and an ever-deteriorating facility's fragile infrastructure. As they approached the control room, their path was blocked by floodwaters filled with sharks circling in floodwaters. Confronting this final obstacle required more than scientific knowledge, necessitating sheer bravery. Dr. Carter took the lead using a makeshift spear made out of laboratory equipment as an attempted diversion, drawing their attention away from his team and creating an all-out rush for safety at the door to the control room. Inside the control room, Dr. Carter kept calm as he initiated lockdown procedures at once. Within moments, automated systems responded, sealing off sections, isolating sharks, and stabilizing compromised areas, while providing immediate threat containment and an escape route from inside. Once within reach of rescue services, their only recourse would be calling them in for assistance. Utilizing the control room's communication systems, they sent an emergency distress signal describing their location and situation. While waiting for a reply, the team took stock of its surroundings in silence, remembering what had transpired despite seemingly impossible circumstances they had caused themselves. Not only had they made themselves vulnerable, but somehow emerged victorious as testaments of human resilience and ingenuity. Waiting for rescue was an anxious time of reflection on events that had unfolded since leaving their mission of discovery behind them. Instead of finding themselves on an expedition of discovery as planned, 
Their team fought to stay alive against nature's unpredictable forces, using scientific expertise not for research but for survival purposes. Helicopters broke the silence, signaling everyone inside that help had arrived and evacuating the team from the facility, now remembered for its dramatic survival story. The aquatic research facility incident prompted global dialogue on wildlife research ethics and containment practices. For Dr. Carter and his team, their ordeal served as a stark reminder of how fragile nature must be treated with reverence. Their dramatic tale, one encompassing science and resilience, would forever highlight humanity's tenuous connection with its deep blue sea surroundings. In the remote coastal town of Blue Water Cove, located on the southern tip of Australia, an aura of untamed beauty embraced the jagged cliffs and expansive azure ocean. The city sat at the meeting point of both rugged wilderness and the deep, mysterious sea. Its pristine beaches and crystalline waters made it a haven for divers seeking to explore the wonders beneath the surface. Amidst the vibrant diving community, two divers stood out for their unparalleled skill and shared passion for the ocean's depths. First, there was Alex Matthews, a seasoned marine biologist whose curiosity for the sea was fueled by an insatiable desire to uncover its secrets. Alex had a deep respect for marine life and an adventurous spirit that led them to explore various corners of the globe. Then Emma Harris was an adventurous underwater photographer with a keen eye for capturing the ocean's beauty. Emma's fascination with the underwater world began in her childhood, inspired by stories of her grandfather, a legendary marine explorer. The legacy he left behind fueled her determination to showcase the ocean's splendor through her lens. With its rich marine biodiversity, Australia was the perfect playground for Alex and Emma's diving endeavors. Blue Water Cove was their favorite spot, where the convergence of warm and cold currents created a mesmerizing underwater ecosystem. The coral reefs teeming with colorful marine life provided a breathtaking spectacle that never failed to amaze them. One sunny morning in July 2005, with a gentle breeze kissing the ocean's surface, Alex and Emma geared up for a dive that would etch itself into the annals of their diving adventures. The town was excited as news spread about a rare gathering of marine creatures near a distant reef known as the Turquoise Abyss. This unique phenomenon drew divers far and wide, eager to witness nature's grandeur. As they made their way to the dive site, anticipation danced in their hearts. The turquoise waters stretched infinitely before them, hinting at the enchantment beneath them. The day held the promise of both adventure and discovery. With unruly curls and a perpetual sparkle of excitement in their eyes, Alex prepared to delve into the depths, equipped with various research tools. Radiant with a love for the ocean, Emma adjusted her camera settings, ready to capture the ocean's wonders in every frame. The boat anchored at the dive site, and with a synchronized splash, they entered the water. The ocean welcomed them into its embrace, a familiar and comforting sensation of weightlessness. The reef's vibrant colors dazzled beneath the surface, and a rich tapestry of marine life unfolded before their eyes. As Alex and Emma descended into the turquoise abyss, they felt a sense of unity with the ocean, and oneness that bound them to its mysteries. Little did they know that on this day the sea would present a trial to test their courage and bond with each other. As Alex and Emma descended deeper into the turquoise abyss, the underwater world revealed itself in all its breathtaking splendor. Colorful coral formations danced with the rhythm of the ocean currents, while schools of fish moved in unison like a living, shimmering tapestry. Their dive progressed smoothly, each immersed in their passion. Alex documenting marine life behavior, and Emma capturing the ocean's beauty through her lens. Time seemed to lose its meaning as they moved gracefully through the water. Suddenly a low hum filled the water, sending ripples of unease through the usually calm ocean. The fish scattered, vanishing into crevices and shadows. Alex and Emma exchanged a puzzled look, sensing a shift in the underwater ambience. Then, emerging from the depths, a shadowy figure materialized. A great white shark is a force of nature, sculpted by evolution for survival. Its cold, unyielding eyes fixated on them, a primal hunger burning within. Fear surged through their veins, but so did adrenaline-fueled determination. Instinctively, they moved closer together, their training and camaraderie serving as their shield against the looming danger. 
Emma, the camera still in hand, captured the predator's image with steady hands, fighting to control her breathing. The adrenaline surged, heightening her senses and sharpening her focus. Alex, the scientist in them, always maintained composure and a watchful eye on the shark, analyzing its behavior and seeking an opportunity to deter its advance. The encounter intensified as the shark circled, its powerful form gliding through the water with menacing grace. Emma snapped more shots, each click echoing through the tense undersea silence. With a sudden burst of speed, the shark closed in. In a split second, it lunged, aiming for Emma. Her heart raced as she maneuvered quickly, but the shark's sharp teeth found their mark, biting into her lower leg. Pain surged through her, but she fought against the panic knowing that survival depended on their collective resilience. Alex acted swiftly, using the metal rod to strike the shark, forcing it to release its grip on Emma. The shark retreated momentarily, allowing them a critical moment to react. Blood mingled with the water, painting the scene with a terrifying urgency. Despite the pain, Emma remained resolute, her determination fueled by the adrenaline surging through her veins. Alex and Emma pushed their limits and their movements synchronized as if choreographed by fate. The shark, formidable and relentless, showcased the primal essence of the ocean. The encounter seemed eternal, a timeless battle between humans and the untamed depths. But eventually, the shark's instincts led it elsewhere, with a new scent in the water diverting its attention. With bated breath and hearts pounding, Alex and Emma slowly ascended, leaving the shark in its wild domain. Emerging from the depths, their adrenaline still surging, Alex and Emma faced a changed reality. The encounter with the great white shark left an indelible physical and emotional mark. The danger had been confirmed and the threat was negligible. The boat bobbed gently on the surface as they hoisted themselves aboard. Emma's lower body was injured and her spirit was slightly shaken but far from broken. The pain was persistent and unforgiving, but so was her resilience. Alex, too, grappled with the aftermath of the encounter, with fear and adrenaline still coursing through their veins. The boat sped towards the shore. Medical help awaited them on land, a beacon of hope in adversity. In the hospital, as Emma underwent surgery and Alex received treatment for their injuries, they found solace in each other's presence. Days turned into weeks, and both underwent intensive rehabilitation. Emma's resilience amazed the medical staff. Her determination to overcome the physical and emotional trauma was awe-inspiring. Alex, too, pushed through the pain, their marine biologist instincts urging them to delve into the depths of their strength. Their families stood by them, offering unwavering support. Days of struggle turned into days of triumph as they made progress, step by painful step. The incident had irrevocably changed them, but also unveiled their true strength. As they left the hospital, scarred but stronger, they held hands, ready to face a new chapter. The ocean would always be a part of them, an unbreakable bond, and they were determined to share its complexities and wonders with the world. Their story spread far and wide, becoming an inspiration for many. Alex and Emma became advocates for marine conservation, their journey a beacon of hope for the ocean and the human spirit. Deep within the Pacific Ocean's depths lay Dr. Emily Hart an extraordinary marine biologist driven by her passion to discover its depths. She dedicated herself to studying its dark depths inhabited by unexplored creatures. Its depths had long remained an uncharted world to most. Her mission was to examine those that lived deep beneath its surface, creatures few had ventured into. Dr. Hart began her expedition equipped with state-of-the-art submersible technology and fully prepared for its incredible pressures in the deep sea in an advanced submersible designed to withstand these intense environments. As she descended deeper, sunlight faded, turning into darkness, only illuminated by powerful lamps mounted to her submersible powerful lamps that cast their glow onto strange and beautiful creatures that called these depths home. Dr. Hart was inspired by every creature she encountered underwater, from tiny bioluminescent jellyfish to giant gliding squids. She took samples, recorded observations, and marveled at this breathtaking world, something she had never experienced on land before. Dr. Hart found herself deeply attuned with all aspects of marine life. Taking samples, recording observations, and marveling at its beauty became her life's work. 
and she felt connected with everything and everyone she found there, a feeling she hadn't felt before in previous life. As she pushed her submersible further into uncharted ocean waters, an uneasy sensation began to set in. While exploring was stimulating, it also meant being exposed to unanticipated dangers, which reminded her of how small and vulnerable her submersible was in such an immense expanse of open water. Her mission suddenly took an alarming and terrifying turn while Dr. Hart was studying a group of elusive deep-sea creatures. An enormous shadow appeared before her submersible and struck it with incredible force, sending it careening inside the cramped cockpit with alarms sounding. Lights were flickering, casting disturbing shadows around her. Dr. Hart was unharmed but stunned. She quickly checked her systems after becoming disoriented in her submersible. Her sub was damaged but still operational. The attack severed her communication lines, leaving her trapped with what many considered extinct creatures such as megalodons. Her heart began to sink upon realizing she would remain there with them for now. She had studied megalodon sharks before, yet never imagined she would come face to face with one. When this occurred, she felt terrified and fascinated. This living remnant from history had come close to making contact. But her initial fascination soon gave way to a growing urgency for survival. The megalodon wasn't simply an intriguing subject of study. It posed an immediate threat that may see Dr. Hart as prey. With no communications available and her vessel damaged, she needed to find ways to safely navigate its depths while dodging an ancient hunter lurking within. As she made her way back toward safer waters, Dr. Hart was overwhelmed by the gravity of her situation. Alone and submerged thousands of feet below surface waters, being pursued by an unspeakable creature that should never exist. This ordeal put her courage and expertise as a marine biologist to the ultimate test. But Dr. Hart was determined not to let fear become her fate, instead focusing on steering the submersible through the dark waters while looking for any signs of megalodons lurking nearby. Every creak and groan of the submersible seemed like a portent of doom. Still, she persevered driven by the hope of returning to the surface and into daylight again. As she explored the deep, Dr. Hart could not shake the sense that someone or something was watching her, that the Megalodon might still be waiting in wait, waiting to strike again at any given moment. Though terrifying, she remained unshakable. As a scientist and an explorer of the deep, she was ready to face whatever challenges came her way with courage and resolve. Dr. Emily Hart's journey through the Pacific Ocean's depths continued at an ever faster pace, each moment seeming an eternity away. Though battered, Dr. Hart's submersible was a testament to human ingenuity, a small light in an insurmountable darkness. Steering with meticulous precision, knowing any miscalculation could spell her doom, she navigated it with great caution, as any misstep could mean death for both herself and her vessel. Dr. Hart was overcome with fear, wonder, and determination as she navigated the problematic undersea terrain. The presence of Megalodon, an old foe from her past, was a constant reminder of life's fragility. However, deep within her was an overwhelming desire to survive and bring new experiences back home. Stories that would challenge what was understood at first glance. At that moment, something unthinkable occurred. The Megalodon emerged from the darkness like an eclipsed star, and slowly glided toward Dr. Hart's submersible vehicle. Dr. Hart's heart raced as she stared into its ancient eyes, reflecting a world long gone, and understood then that her journey wasn't simply one about survival, but about connecting the past with the present through something as monumental as this monster embodied by megalodons like it. Dr. Hart used quick thinking and intuition to successfully maneuver her submersible submersion through the deep sea, using its terrain to her advantage. She was relieved to discover she had survived what could have been an impossible encounter. Her vessel had been damaged, communications had been severed, and she still needed to find her way back up into the surface world. After what seemed like an eternity, light began filtering through the water and increasing brightness. Dr. Hart's story was met with amazement and skepticism back on land. However, the data she gathered and images captured by her submersible proved the existence of megalodon sharks and opened a new chapter in marine biology. Her experience with prehistoric sharks advanced scientific understanding. It illuminated hidden depths within our oceans that still hold many secrets that need exploring. Dr. Hart's adventure became legendary, 
becoming an epic tale of courage, resilience, and the indomitable human spirit. Gazing upon the ocean waters glistening under the sun, she knew her bond to its deep sea creatures was unbreakable. Having faced down an ancient being, she gained a new respect for what lay beyond its waves, becoming forever changed by this experience. In the heart of the Indian Ocean, the island of Fuvamula in the Maldives beckoned with its crystal-clear waters and abundant marine life. It was a paradise for scuba divers, offering a window into an underwater world of vibrant coral reefs and exotic sea creatures. Among those drawn to this underwater haven was Clara Bennett, a young and enthusiastic scuba diver from Canada, eager to explore the depths of Fuvamula's renowned dive sites. Clara joined a diving tour led by experienced local guides who knew the waters like the back of their hands. The group consisted of divers of varying experiences, all united by a love for the ocean. For Clara, this trip was more than just a dive. It was a chance to escape the mundane and connect with nature in its most unadulterated form. As they set out on the boat that morning, the sun shone brightly, reflecting off the turquoise water. The air was filled with excitement and a hint of nervous anticipation. The dive site for the day was a famous spot known for its colorful coral gardens and the diverse sea life that inhabited them. Geared up and ready, Clara and the group descended into the water, a world of blue enveloping them. The sight that greeted them was breathtaking, a kaleidoscope of corals in every imaginable color, teeming with fish darting in and out. Clara felt a sense of awe and freedom as she floated weightlessly, taking in the beauty around her. As the group explored the reef, Clara became mesmerized by a school of vibrant parrotfish. Without realizing it, she drifted away from the group, her attention entirely captivated by the scene before her. When she looked up, the other divers were nowhere in sight. A surge of panic hit her. She was alone in the vast ocean. Clara tried to stay calm, reminding herself of the training she had received. She checked her air supply and buoyancy and ascended to a shallower depth to spot the group. But as she turned, she noticed a large, dark shape in the distance. Her heart skipped a beat as she recognized a shark's sleek, unmistakable form silently gliding through the deep water. The shark, a solitary predator, seemed aware of her presence. Clara knew she had to be cautious. Sudden movements could attract its attention. She slowly started to swim back towards where she had last seen her group, keeping an eye on the shark. The shark, however, seemed to be following her. It wasn't aggressive, but its silent stalking was unnerving. Clara's mind raced with thoughts of what to do. She remembered reading about the behavior of sharks and how they often acted out of curiosity rather than aggression. But the distance between her and the shark was closing. She could see its eyes unblinking and focused. Every second felt like an eternity as Clara navigated through the water, her movements deliberate and controlled. Clara's heart pounded as the shark continued to close the distance between them. She could now see its sleek, powerful body in more detail, its skin a mosaic of scars and marks from its life in the deep. Clara's mind raced with thoughts of escape, but she knew panicking could only worsen things. Now, only a few meters away, the shark seemed to be studying her, its dark eyes giving nothing away. Clara tried to recall everything she had learned about shark behavior. She knew maintaining eye contact and a confident posture could sometimes deter a shark from attacking. But the theory was far different from the reality she was now facing. As the shark made a slow, deliberate circle around her, Clara stayed as still as possible, her eyes locked on the massive creature. She could feel her heart thumping against her ribcage, the sound of her breathing loud in her ears. The world around her seemed to fade away, leaving only her and the shark in this underwater dance. When Clara thought the shark might lose interest, it suddenly turned and swam directly towards her. Its mouth opened, revealing rows of sharp teeth. Clara's training kicked in. She pushed out with her fins and made herself as big as possible, trying to seem less like prey. The shark veered off at the last moment, its rough skin brushing against Clara's wetsuit. The contact sent a jolt of fear through her, but she held her ground. The shark circled back, each passing a test of Clara's resolve. In those tense moments, Clara felt a strange connection to the creature. It was a wild, powerful being. Yet there was a sense of intelligence in its actions. She realized that the shark was not attacking but displaying a natural curiosity. Suddenly, the sound of bubbles caught Clara's attention. 
She glanced to her side and saw the flash of dive lights. Her group, led by the guides, came to her rescue. Relief washed over her as she saw the familiar figures approach. The shark, sensing the arrival of more divers, gave Clara one last look before gracefully descending into the depths, disappearing into the blue. Clara's legs felt weak with relief, and her group quickly surrounded her. The guides checked on her, ensuring she was unharmed. As they ascended to the surface, Clara was silent, processing the encounter she had just experienced. Back on the boat, the group was abuzz with excitement and relief. Clara shared her story, her voice steady but still tinged with disbelief. The guides praised her for handling the situation calmly, noting how rare it was to have such a close encounter with a shark. The rest of the trip was uneventful, but Clara couldn't shake the awe and respect she had gained for the shark. She had faced one of nature's most formidable predators and come away with a story she would never forget. Back home, Clara often recounted her encounter in the Maldives. The experience had changed her, giving her a deeper appreciation for the ocean and its inhabitants. She had come face to face with a creature many feared, and instead of terror, she found a profound respect for the balance of life in the ocean. The story of Clara's encounter became a reminder of the beauty and mystery of the underwater world, a tale of respect, courage, and the delicate coexistence of humans and nature in the vast blue wilderness. In the early 2000s, around 2003, Mark Wilson was a 37-year-old avid surfer from Ventura, sunny California. Surfing was his life's joy, and he'd been riding waves since his teenage years. With the sun blazing and the Pacific Ocean calling, Mark gathered his close-knit crew of surfing enthusiasts one summer day. There was Griff Wainwright, a lanky fellow always ready with a joke and up for an adventure. Tessa Langley, the vibrant soul of the group, whose laughter was infectious and spirit indomitable. Lastly, Royce Carmichael, the wise old surfer who'd been catching waves since the 80s. Together, they formed a tight-knit crew, ready to conquer any wave that dared challenge them. Their destination was the renowned Breakneck Bay, a spot known for its wild waves and, unfortunately, occasional shark sightings. It was a picturesque location, with the Pacific Highway hugging one side and rocky cliffs standing tall on the other. As they approached Breakneck Bay in Mark's weathered pickup truck, surfboards securely strapped to the roof, the salty scent of the ocean filled the air. The radio played tunes that set the mood for the day ahead, adding to the mounting excitement. They prepared their boards upon arrival, waxing them up and tightening their leashes. The waves roared, crashing against the shore in a rhythmic dance, inviting the adventurous spirits of the surfers. Griff, the pack leader, paddled out first, feeling the salty ocean spray on his face. The waves were challenging, but that's precisely what they sought. The others followed suit, each handling a mix of excitement and caution as they headed into the heart of the waves. Unbeknownst to them, that fateful day at Breakneck Bay would hold an unexpected and life-changing event. The waters concealed a secret, an evil force that would soon unleash its fury on Mark, altering the trajectory of his life in ways they could never have foreseen. The waves roared that day at Breakneck Bay, each swell reaching greater heights than the last. Mark, Griff, Tessa, and Royce were riding the waves, the thrill of the ocean coursing through their veins. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, Mark spotted a shadowy figure gliding beneath the surface. His heart skipped a beat as fear shot through him. A chill ran down his spine. Shark-infested waters weren't just a rumor, they were a reality. He yelled to his friends, Shark! Clear the water. Panic set in. Tessa paddled frantically, trying to reach the shore. Griff and Royce were close behind, their hearts racing. But fate had other plans. The water erupted as a massive shark lunged towards Mark. Teeth gnashed, and within seconds the predator clamped onto his arm, its razor-sharp teeth slicing through flesh and bone. Mark fought back, adrenaline surging. He landed powerful blows on the shark's snout, desperately trying to free himself. The struggle was intense, a life-and-death battle in the heart of the ocean. Blood tainted the water, swirling like a macabre dance. The pain was excruciating, but Mark's survival instinct kicked into high gear. Summoning every ounce of strength, he wrenched his arm free from the shark's relentless grip. The shark, momentarily stunned by the ferocity of Mark's fight, 
retreated into the depths. Bleeding and disoriented, Mark caught a wave to the shore where his friends anxiously awaited him. Griff and Royce quickly fashioned a tourniquet from a surfboard leash, attempting to stem the bleeding. The sight was harrowing. Mark's arm was mangled, a gruesome testament to the shark's brutal attack. Waves of pain coursed through him as he struggled to remain conscious. At that moment, their carefree surf day had transformed into a fight for life. Mark's courage had been tested in the face of nature's raw power. The shark-infested waters had claimed their victim, forever changing Mark and his friends. Tessa, tears streaming down her face, had already alerted the lifeguards. They arrived swiftly, their expertise a beacon of hope amidst the turmoil. The lifeguards acted quickly, securing Mark on a makeshift stretcher and rushing him to the waiting ambulance. In the hospital, the medical team worked tirelessly to stabilize Mark. His arm was severely damaged, and the risk of infection was high. It was a long and agonizing night as surgeons fought to save what remained of Mark's limb. His family, notified of the grave situation, rushed to his side. The surgery was a success, but Mark's recovery would be grueling. He woke up to the harsh reality of his situation, his arm heavily bandaged and immobilized. The pain was relentless, but Mark was determined. He had faced a shark in the ocean and survived. He was not about to give up now. His family, friends, and fellow surfers rallied around him, providing unwavering emotional support. Tessa, who had been there from the beginning, was a constant source of strength, holding his hand through the darkest moments. He pushed himself through every exercise, every moment of pain, with one goal in mind, to regain the use of his arm and return to the waves he loved so much. Mark's journey to recovery wasn't just physical, it was emotional and psychological too. The near-death experience had left its scars, haunting his dreams and triggering moments of intense anxiety. But Mark was resilient. He sought therapy to help him cope with the trauma and gradually found his way back to a sense of normalcy. Though forever marked by scars, his arm regained a surprising amount of functionality. He could surf again, albeit with modifications and accommodations. His return to the ocean was a triumphant moment, a testament to his indomitable spirit. He continued to surf, his love for the waves stronger than ever. His family, forever changed by that fateful day, treasured every moment together, knowing the fragility of life. The story of Mark's shark attack spread through the surfing community and beyond. It became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the unpredictable power of nature. Ultimately, Mark's journey was not just about surviving a shark attack, but also about embracing life's challenges, facing them head on, and emerging more substantially on the other side. In the small coastal town of Lefties, West Australia, known for its rugged coastline and thrilling surf spots, a legend had long been whispered among the surfing community. It was about a colossal and untamed wave that appeared only under specific conditions. This wave, known as the Titan, had a fearsome reputation for being infested with sharks, a detail that only added to its mystique. Among the surfers who frequented lefties, one stood out for his skill and fearlessness, Jack Morrison. A seasoned surfer with sun-bleached hair and a collection of surfing trophies, Jack had conquered waves around the world. But the Titan remained his unfulfilled challenge, a personal Everest he was determined to conquer. The locals, well-versed in the tales of the Titan, often warned Jack of its dangers. They spoke of experienced surfers who had dared to ride the wave, but encountered the sharks that lurked beneath, never to be seen again. Jack, however, was undeterred. To him, the Titan was the ultimate test, a chance to prove his mastery over the sea. As spring rolled into summer, the conditions for the Titan began to materialize. The air buzzed with anticipation. Surfers and locals alike knew that the Titan was about to awaken. Jack prepared meticulously, checking his equipment and discussing strategies with his longtime friend and fellow surfer, Lucas. On the day the Titan was expected to appear, the beach was crowded with onlookers, their eyes fixed on the horizon. The sea was unusually calm, but there was a palpable tension in the air. Jack surveyed the ocean, dressed in his wetsuit, waiting for the right moment. As if on cue, the water began to swell, and a massive wave started to form in the distance. The crowd gasped as the Titan emerged, its mighty crest a spectacle of nature's raw power. 
Jack paddled out, his heart pounding with excitement and a hint of fear. As he approached the towering wave, he could feel the force of the water beneath him. He paddled harder, positioning himself. With a deep breath, he stood up on his board, riding along the crest of the Titan. The thrill was indescribable. He was a speck on a mountain of water, conquering the legendary wave. But as he maneuvered down the wave's face, Jack noticed dark shapes in the water below. Sharks, attracted by the movement and the gathering of fish disturbed by the wave, were swimming just beneath the surface. Jack's mind raced. He needed to stay on the wave and away from the sharks. As he neared the end of the wave, one of the sharks, a massive great white, leaped out of the water, its jaws wide open. Jack narrowly avoided it, feeling the whoosh of air as the shark snapped its jaws shut just inches from him. Jack's heart hammered in his chest as the great white shark plunged back into the ocean, its powerful tail sending a water spray. The crowd on the beach witnessing this terrifying spectacle stood frozen in shock. Jack knew he had to act fast. The waters around him were now a hunting ground. He kept his balance, riding the wave with a newfound urgency. His mind, trained from years of surfing, was acutely aware of every movement in the water. Once thrilling, the wave became his escape route from the looming danger below. As Jack neared the shallower waters, another shark, encouraged by the presence of the Great White, darted toward him. Its dark silhouette moved swiftly, cutting through the water. Jack, seeing the imminent threat, made a split-second decision. He jumped off his board, aiming for a wave to push him towards the shore. Confused by the sudden movement, the shark missed Jack and collided with his board, sending it flying into the air. Jack, submerged, kicked hard, propelling himself towards the beach. His lungs screamed for air, but he knew he couldn't surface yet. The sharks were still too close. Underwater, Jack's world was a blur of bubbles and shadows. He swam with all his might, driven by instinct and the will to survive. Finally, he broke the surface, gasping for air, and continued to swim towards the safety of the shore. The crowd, now in a state of panic, rushed to help. Lucas and other surfers dove into the water, forming a human chain to reach Jack. They grabbed him as another shark approached, its fin slicing through the water ominously close. Together, they pulled Jack to the beach, where he collapsed, exhausted and shaken but alive. The beach erupted in a mix of cheers and cries of relief. The Coast Guard, alerted by the commotion, arrived swiftly, their boat cutting through the waves to ward off the shark still circling nearby. Jack lay on the sand, his breathing heavy and eyes staring at the sky. He had ridden the Titan at a cost he hadn't anticipated. The reality of what could have been a fatal encounter settled in. Around him, friends and strangers alike offered comfort and praise for his bravery. But Jack's thoughts were elsewhere. In the days that followed, Jack's encounter with the sharks became the talk of the town. News crews and journalists descended on lefties, eager to capture the story of the surfer who had faced the Titan and survived a shark attack. Jack, however, was introspective, his brush with death having given him a new perspective on life and the ocean. He spoke to the media not about his triumph over the wave, but about respect for nature and the need for caution in the water. His story highlighted shark conservation efforts and the importance of understanding these misunderstood creatures. Jack continued to surf, but he was more cautious, more respectful of the ocean's power. He shared his experience with young surfers, teaching them the thrill of riding waves and the dangers that lurk beneath. The legend of the Titan and Jack's encounter with the sharks became a cautionary tale, a reminder to all who ventured into the waters of lefties. It was a story of adventure, survival, and respect for the natural world, echoing through the surfing community for years.